What is that? He's like, me. Hello, welcome to Death by Podcast, the horror movie podcast where we go through the alphabet and watch a vintage horror movie for every letter. Today's letter is the letter. What is the letter? Y. Y. We've been talking y. about Z for so long. I was like, which letter is it? I am your host, Adam. That is your other host, Kevin. We're here to talk about the letter Y. You're next. Kevin had the letter Y. And that's what you picked. Yeah. So it's um, kind of it's kind of out of our parameters, but we allowed it. It's a newer movie, 2011. It's a newer one. It's it's not as 20 years old, or it's 10 years old. 10 years old now, yeah. It's not as well known as it probably should be, um, but it's a good one. Solid movie. Solid movie. Solid movie. Did I already mention about all the chicken and pudding that I ate, dude? I can barely move. I don't know why I ate so much of it. Seems so like if, a bad combination. Yeah, Kevin's drinking like all the LaCroix in the world right now. I wish I had one. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yep. Chicken. I got notes that I wanted to get through before we get to the show. So chicken okay. and pudding. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bill Mosley, you said. Yeah. Yeah. It's Bill Mosley's birthday. Of, uh, of, 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 go ahead. Tell him. All the Rob Zombie movies, you know, and uh, he's in other stuff and I know what it is and I'm drawing a blank. You know what other stuff? And this is why I'm glad you brought it up because Bill Mosley is he's one of the. Um, uh science men from the 88 blob yes he is yeah yeah, he, yeah. which one is he he dies he's like, i think he's he's like the good one he's right? one of the good ones and he's i think he's like in the sh- the the sewer kind of like getting pulled down or something like that like he he goes he dies oh, does there. it go into his suit no that's the black dude science no, no the black dude gets sucked into the sewer but it comes up into his face right you know like the black guy I don't, uh, I Bill Mosley dies. Maybe he gets a grenade to the face. I don't know something, but we see he, he's in the sewer and he helps them, I think. And then on his way out, he gets jacked up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. He's in. Yeah. 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 Okay. He is in the sewer. Now that I'm, yeah. He's also in Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. Oh yeah. He's All in kinds of stuff. Yeah. He's in, uh, he's in a lot of stuff, but he's, I mean, he's in the night of the living dead, uh, remake, uh, uh 19, 1990, 1990 with, and, um, Tony Todd plays Dwayne Jones as his character. Oh, didn't know that. It's worth a watch. It's really good. Army of Darkness. Directed by Savini. Sorry. I'd like to give that a, I'll give that a watch. It's good. Uh, um, but yeah. Uh, Army of Darkness and then House of a Thousand Corpses. Who is he in Army of Darkness? Um, he plays a Deadite General, I believe. No shit. What? <laughs> Deadite Captain. So he probably doesn't show. He, I doubt He's probably in, in makeup. Space. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but come it, on, yeah. men. This is probably that guy. Come <laughs> on, men. Attack. But yeah. But his, yeah, I mean, he's awesome in Devil's Rejects, in House of a Thousand Corpses. I is mean, he? he just, I like, you know, my, I like those movies. And he is, he, he sells it, man. I honestly, I can't remember any of his performances in any of those. I only remember him from The Blob. Oh, really? You're, yeah. that's nuts. Man, he's, yeah. he is good in the zombie movies. He's, I, I just saw he's in, uh, my favorite part about of uh, Grindhouse, which were the shorts, the trailers in between. Yeah, he's in, he's don't in, he's not in don't <laughs> he's in uh he's in Werewolf Women of the SS. Wait, which one was that? It was the one. The, <laughs> it, it was it wasn't Thanksgiving. It wasn't <laughs> don't. It was the one with the werewolf women. I don't remember that. I got yeah, one of go it, it, it. It was don't. It was um, it was a uh, werewolf woman, the women of the SS. Uh, it was Thanksgiving, and it was Hobo with a Shotgun. Which, Hobo with a Shotgun ended up being a real movie. Yeah, so Hobo with a Shotgun was they had a contest before they made Grand House yeah. to like make a fake trailer, and we'll put it in this movie. We'll put the winner in, and Hobo with a Shotgun won. Oh wow! And then they wound up making it into a real movie, which I. Have you seen Hobo with a Shack? I haven't, man. It's been in my list since it came out. I I love it. Is it? I love it. It's Dr. I mean, Howard, man. Yeah, it's but it's it, it's it's not I wouldn't it's not it's a greasy strangler uh uh stuff. Territory. Not in, not in that like it's disturbing to watch. I mean, there's some stuff, but like I wouldn't fault anybody for not liking it. I love sure. it, but it's fucking weird. I'm gonna check it out. I need to check <laughs> especially since you say this with the yeah. grindhouse. Is Rucker Hauer in the trailer? The Grindhouse no. trailer? Uh, no. Different but, actor? 
Yeah, different actor, but man, is that movie. Man, Hobo with a Shotgun is so good, it's crazy. Kevin, don't. <laughs> All those shorts are directed by big name directors. I think we're over yeah. the women in the SS was uh, Rob Zombie. And of course. I bet somebody put all those together on YouTube, like all the trailers. I'll go watch them. Good stuff. Uh, why were we I talking about Eli it? Roth was uh, Thanksgiving. Anyway, Bill Mosley. Happy birthday. Bill Mosley. Yeah. If you're listening. Apparently, he's a really nice guy, too. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike he his, seems like he would like be. his uh, characters. Man. Yeah. You, yeah. Should, yeah. you should give Devil's Rejects another try. He is fantastic. No. <laughs> Speaking of, you got any Rob Zombie move, um, news? Um, He. Took a photo of the director's chair that says the monsters on the chair, but yeah. that is it as far as monster watch goes. I thought I saw a new picture of, I know we saw the cast mm-hmm. it was, I thought I saw a new picture of the cast sitting in their chairs in front of the house. Is that noon or no, but maybe it's old. That know. seems like the, the first, the, the, I think that's the, the only photo that's been released. Oh, okay. All right. Still, I'm still weirded out. Cause I, I don't know. I might have, maybe it was last week. I don't know when it was. Monster Go Home was on Spanguli. Was that last mm-hmm. weekend? Yeah. And I was watching it. And I'm like, man, this is the monsters right here. I don't want to see this freakazoid Rob Zombie, <laughs> Sherry Moon Zombie, or uh, monsters. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm scared. Now, is that the one with Ed Gwen or is the one, is that the yeah. one? From, okay. No, it, yeah. And it's in color. It was the first in color. Okay. Uh, but it's and we're and they're all like blue. It's weird. It's really weird coloring. I, I said that to Lynn the other day because um, I want to do the monsters for Halloween next year. Do it. And because I think my daughter would look cool dressed as Grandpa Monster. Yeah. And absolutely. I said, well, we have to cover her in blue makeup. She's like, why? I'm like, well, he's, Grandpa Monster's blue. <laughs> She's like, no, he's not. Are you nuts? I'm like, yeah. Have you seen the movies? He's yeah. like, he's, he's like blue. Right? Or is he like gray? He's got like a blue tint to him, right? I mean, they're black and white. Yeah, when they color when they colorize them, them. they're all everybody's blue. Every, all the dead, all the ghoul, like whatever, like the creed. Well, Herman's the cast. green. No, he's blue, man. In the monster go home, he's blue. Really? As if like Romero blue, like Dawn of the Dead, Romero blue. You know how the, all, all his zombies are blue? Yeah, I guess I know what you mean. For some reason, like now that I'm thinking about it, maybe maybe Grandpa is gray. I don't know. I don't know. Gray blue. It's like a gray blue. You know, it is. It's not like like, this. It's not like my cup. Right. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's not like the ocean. The ocean is kind of like brown, like shit. But anyway, speaking of something that you just said, reminded me. I don't know. Kevin and I are part of Drink and Draw every couple of weeks that my brother and his uh, creative partner created last week. This last Saturday, we had one. Kevin showed up for a minute, but it, we were having technical difficulties. Uh, I don't think you were there. That's what it was. I blew everybody's mind. The reason I'm, something you just said, and then also my dog is sitting here watching Harry Potter eating uh, sweet potatoes. My dog is eating sweet potatoes watching Harry Potter. And at the drink and draw, I blew everyone's mind when the topic of Harry Potter came up. And I said, did you know that AK Jollings who created Harry Potter plagiarized Harry Potter. Did you know this? Nobody no. talks about this. Do you remember I, the movie? Do you remember the movie troll from 1986? Yeah. I've it, seen troll. It's a, it's a, it's one of those movies. It's like, it's good. It's not supposed to be anything, but what it is. And it's good. Um, in, in I maybe, saw it because I, I, I saw troll too. And it, I was like, Oh, well, let's watch troll one. No it has nothing. It's nothing to do. No, with it. Troll yeah. two is a maniac bonanza. Uh, yeah. Troll one is more like creatures and magic and stuff like that. And the main character is a kid named Harry Potter who's trying to be a wizard. Um, I'm pretty sure you'll recognize his face, this kid. Nobody talks about this, that she got this idea from. And at the drink and draw, our friend Blake gave me the exact same look that you just gave me and, and reached for his phone to Google it like you're doing right now <laughs> because he didn't believe me. <laughs> And, and then he like when he found the description for troll he like read it out loud to the group and it's like spot on <laughs> oh wow you're right <laughs> That's why wild. doesn't anybody believe me when i say this because it's, it's nuts i mean yeah. I, maybe i haven't seen troll i thought i had but apparently nope, not. it's got like julia De- louise dreyfus <laughs> like really early a lot Could of things made, a lot of things made me bring that up but yeah nobody talks about how she owes whoever made that movie oh and you know who else is in that movie our boy from um, 
from the stuff. What's his name? The main Michael guy. Michael Moriarty? Yeah. He's the dad. He plays Harry Potter Sr. Yeah. This is wild. Isn't that crazy? You know, I would watch it, but I've never seen any of the Harry Potter movies or read any of the books, and I'm not going to start. Don't, you don't need to see no. those to see to watch Troll. I know, but I wouldn't know how close it is. <laughs> I mean, it's it's more con- it's more concept and character. Yeah, the movie the movie itself is completely different, but it's a it's a cool eighties movie, you know. And then speaking of speaking of, one of our drink and draw friends, Eric Wolfgang, who also friend of the show, uh, designed yeah. our logo. He tried Steakum for the first time on my be- on my suggestion, and hated it, and so he is now canceled. He's banished. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I guarantee he tried it the wrong way. He says he didn't, but since I have the microphone, he can't dispute it. So, okay. Have you had Stegum? Have you had it? I know no, I've never had it. I didn't know what it was. So you, uh, oh man, it's the ultimate eighties meat sheet. It's one of those things too, that like, you know what it'd be. You ever, you ever like never hear of something and then it's suddenly introduced everywhere. to you. Yeah. And now it's like everywhere. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's, it's like it got unlocked in like my, yeah reality but oh, yeah. no, i've never had it dude in the 80s Sven Gulli on a saturday afternoon with a with a steak and sandwich that's where it's at i'll make i'll next time we're in the same room together i'll make you one oh, okay <laughs> yeah or you, or you go to walmart and get them you'll have to no but you know what if yeah it, it, it's it, super you, trashy but it's so good you're gonna have to yeah if yeah you if i'm gonna try it you want it the right way yeah and yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly just exactly. like when i try and get you to watch star trek i try and get you to watch good full episodes but instead you watch the last 10 minutes of like the 10th movie uh yeah. for the for the behind the scenes i'm not gonna that, just yeah for the behind the scenes on that check out boob tube tv our new episode on patreon we spent a lot of time talking about star trek yeah i'm not gonna you know i'm not just gonna eat steak them out of a out of the can or whatever however Dude, it if, it, if steak them came it comes in frozen meat sheets like this uh, if it came in a can, that would be that would be interesting because you could take it with you. Let's talk about real quick our schedule next week. So we've got Y this week. Next week is Z, and that finishes out our alphabet, our our mission statement mm-hmm. comes to an end. We are going to start the alphabet over again, but before we do that, we're going to do a couple. Uh, we're going to try some maybe interviews or guests or uh, what else were we going to do? Some other things. Ghostbusters. Oh, and Ghostbusters. So Ghostbusters comes out like the night after we record next week. So the following week, we'll have a Ghostbusters show, the new Ghostbusters movie. And I'm sure we'll be talking about all of the Ghostbusters movies. Yeah. So it'll be a nice Ghostbusters bonanza. So if if you plan on listening to our show in two weeks, we will have a full spoiler review of the new Ghostbusters, as well as a full spoiler review of, of Kevin's favorite 2016 uh, <laughs> Ghostbusters than the shitty ones that came out in the 80s and maybe the cartoons and all that stuff. We'll just do all the Ghostbusters. I just watched a bunch of the cartoons the other day. They're good, man. Oh, they hold up. They're great. Why don't we do that? Let's do that for that's a great idea. We didn't, we didn't do that. Let's uh, on boob tube TV. We just did on Patreon. We just did uh, season two, episode four of tales from the crypt. Would you like to for next week? do real ghostbusters episode one yeah I, or, or was I'll there a be, different episode that, there's a particular episode that if you haven't seen in a while yeah. i would uh recommend let's do that what is um it? i think it's episode 12 of season one okay um it's called citizen ghost it is the it it don't, don't say too much don't say too much it's the bridge between the movie and the cartoon no shit all right let's do that one i've probably seen it but i didn't know what you just said so yeah. let's do that. We didn't say it on Patreon, but Patreon, now you know what we're going to watch for next week. I will let you know on Patreon exactly what episode it is. Kevin thinks it's 12. I say he's wrong, but he's probably right. So so that's what you got to look forward to. A lot of Ghostbusters stuff. And then when we start over the alphabet, we were also going to do some number movies instead of maybe, letters. Yeah, maybe we might. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll figure it out. We yeah. might do a retrospective on on the whole list or whatever oh yeah we're gonna do that too so and basically and or and also we could turn this whole podcast into like just a george clooney podcast just talk about george clooney every i time. mean i'm I've, i'm up for that i've i've seen all of vr 
a couple <laughs> times. He's only in the first like four seasons, I think. Yeah, but, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, I always I, thought he'd come back for that last episode when they're all out back. I'm like, he's gonna be playing basketball when they come out. He well, he came out. <laughs> that would that would have been weird if they ended the show with him playing basketball because like that nobody. So awesome. Well, he did come back. He came back twice. Did he? He came, yeah. He came, but in he the came, last what he came back when Julianne Margulis left. Right. Because, yeah, because it was a problem <laughs> because they spent the whole time like being like, OK, will they, won't they? And then they get together and then he left the show, but she didn't. But Juliana Margolis got pregnant in real life. Oh. So now it's like trouble. Well, yeah, it's like he he moved away, trouble. but he knocked up this ki- this this chick moved away. And it's just, and she's li- still living in Chicago and it's kind of stupid. But then event when she leaves, like two seasons later, she goes to like live with him. And he's like she goes to his house and wherever I think he's I forget where he is. I think he's in Seattle, but he's there. And he's just like he's there for the last like five seconds. Don't. And then and then years later, it's really funny. There's a he comes back for another episode, like in season like 12 or 13. I can't believe it went that long. It went like 14 seasons. Jesus Christ. And there. So all the new doctors are like at an, at the hospital they works at. They're like, I think they're transferring a heart or something. And he says like, hey, I used to work at. Uh, oh, my God. But uh, you guys are from. uh What's the name of the fucking hospital? Is it Rush? Is it Rush? No. No, it's not. It's not a real hospital. Oh, it's general yeah. uh, emergency general. room. It's called re- emergency <laughs> room. For, for, it, it's like, why, hey, does name, from- why doesn't anybody call that show emergency room? Because it's called the R. That's the name of the show. But the full name is emergency room. I mean, you can call it Er if you wanted to. I used know? to. I can't yeah. believe I never called it. Emer- I'm calling it emergency room. For now. Anyway, so that show. Anyway, but yeah. So the new cast is there like and it's. Hawkeye's wife. It's I think Mackay Pfeiffer. What did you just say? Hawkeye? Hawkeye. You know Hawkeye in the Avengers movies. Yeah. You know his oh, wife. Oh, uh, Chicken Daphne. Freaks and Geeks. Yeah. Daphne. She's on ER for a while. She's the greatest. I but love she, her. So it's her. I don't think Mackay Pfeiffer is still there. I don't know. Anyway, there's like a group of people, and they're there, and they're like picking up a heart at like at George Clooney's hospital that he works at now with Juliana Margulies, and they're like, "Oh, you used to work. Th- I used to work there." And they like do the whole like, do you know this person? Yeah. And they're like, no. And like, and they don't know any of the same people. <laughs> like, All right, so it, it's been so long between, and they've had so many different doctors. George Clooney literally, not only does he not know, he starts naming all the people from the original cast, and this new in this cast is like, I know, I have no idea who that is. All right. And then they land on one guy that's still there, and it's the guy that runs the hospital, who's in like one episode a year. <laughs> <laughs> no, so like, oh, yeah. without without going too deep into the into the emergency Sorry. room rabbit hole, are you are you saying that in story Clooney still he left the main hospital and he works in a different hospital in Chicago? Yeah. No, it's not in Chicago. It's, oh, okay, in, a, okay. it's in a different gotcha. state. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. So welcome to the ER podcast. It, no, one thing I will say, no, it's, it's a good, very it's a show. it is distracting because his best friend stays on the show yeah, for many uh, Green, seasons. Doctor yeah. Green. And things happen with Dr. Green. He dies. Doesn't yeah, he? I wasn't going to spoil it. But yeah, Dr. Green spoil dies it. and he's not at the funeral and he's not. at. And it's it's yeah, like, it's weird. Man, where's Doug? Yeah. You know, like Doug would have been here. I thought he died, too, but I guess not. No, he moves away. Okay. He gets so. Yeah, he gets he, he's he gets he's like, a, man. he's just, a you know, he's a badass. He's punching abusive fathers in the face. He's a pediatrician. Yeah, I know. He's, he's I loved that. I loved him in that The one just, where he like pulls a kid out of the water and it's raining and oh yeah like he that. got awards for that one that yeah. one's a big one that was the one that i was like because that was right around dust till dawn time and it was like his hair was shaping up nicely that that caesar cut that i was trying to grow and it didn't work <laughs> i had it man clooney um, man clooney was a man he was you know i could do the george clooney podcast all day i'll do dude i love him. oh brother we're out thou. i'll yeah. do i'll do all of them don't <laughs> my neighbor is watching speaking of horror my i'm looking at my neighbor right now he's watching passion of the christ get the fuck out of here what the- <laughs> passion of the i remember little, talking to my mom after i saw that there. my mom was like she wasn't really into it but she was like how was it and i went in thinking like, like I was, people were talking about it before i saw it and people were saying like 
man, they just beat, beat the shit out of him for two hours. <laughs> and I remember being like, that's pretty dismissive. That's not what the movie is. Oh, that's wait. just what people say. And then I went and saw it. And I'm like, wow, it really is. They're kicking the shit out of him for two hours. That's the whole movie. Which one's Passion of the Christ? Is that Passion the, new- Christ, the one where they kick the shit out of Jesus? Right. Well, they hours. always kick the shit out of Jesus, but not like this. this isn't that, that's the that's the newer one with Caviezel. Yeah. OK, that's not what he's watching. I said it wrong. Is What's he watching- the one with Willem Dafoe? That's the last temptation of Christ. That's what he's watching. Oh, that's that's uh Scorsese. Yes. Yeah. Different. Oh, yeah. Totally he doesn't different. doesn't take nearly the beating. That, last temptation. Uh, last his, temptation his, of Christ is more like, let's talk about this. It's it's I mean, it's more it's 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 more like like a nine mil like a what's that we were saying movie nine millimeter? Yeah. With with the it's about, it's about like porn that like for, it's made by the devil or something. <laughs> 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 Devil, devil. oh man speaking of i love this this is great my neighbor sends me she's a big halloween person we walk our dogs together she's out she went out of town with her dogs to wisconsin she sends me pictures of her her dogs hanging out just like in this cemetery just like beautiful day sunny you know they're at this cemetery and there's the gate and it says she, she didn't realize this it says saint anne's cemetery and her dog is underneath this, you know, the arches, the gate. It ba- so it basically says Satan's Cemetery, Saint Anne's Satan's Cemetery. That's get kind it? Of funny. Yeah. It's weird. It. And I texted her back. I was like, "You realize you guys are hanging out in Satan's Cemetery? Like, <laughs> it's totally." And I, it wouldn't. It's probably like some gateway to hell. You know, a secret. I don't know what. It was weird. Satan Cemetery sounds like a a badass album. Satan Cemetery. Yeah. Um, Name Satan Cemetery. Yep. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what'd you watch you watch anything else this week i watched midnight mass i finished midnight mass okay we're, um, gonna, we're gonna talk about midnight mass before we do i also watched uh squid game you watch that oh i didn't i didn't watch it no are you um, gonna watch it i feel like i should everybody's I'm not talking gonna spoil about it. it yeah don't spoil it because i might is it i mean <laughs> i wasn't i wasn't planning on going into any depth whatsoever but it's good it, it's good i'm sure it's good i mean everybody's you know korea man they're putting out over the last few years since like train to Busan hashtag alive. Did you see that hashtag alive? Nope. Excellent zombie movie. Uh, train to Busan and the sequel are good. You know, they did parasite won a bunch of Oscars. Who cares? Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? There was a, another one. I think they did a werewolf movie, but squid game. I was like too much hype. I'm not going to watch it. It looks it's too color, too many colors going on. But then I ended up watching an episode and got hooked and finished it. And it's got a lot of train to Basana actors and directors and whatever. It's good. It's really good show. I'm, the reason, uh, yeah, yeah, the okay, reason I bring ahead. it up is I think you should watch it, but don't do what my sister did. Cause the thing that perplexes me is that all the people who told me to watch it that I heard that I hear talking about it on the street, they're all bros. Like I live really close to Wrigleyville bro central. Right. And I'm like, I'm not going to watch this show that all the bros are watching. So then I actually watch it and I'm like, how the fuck do these bros understand this show? Because it's number one, it's got subtitles. So you have to read. (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, you know, number two, it's a really well acted, really well thought out series. And I'm like, bros, what is that? But then I realized when I brought it up to my sister, she's like, you liked that? And I was like, yeah, I liked it. It was really good. She's like, that was the dumbest show I've ever seen. I'm like, I'm like, wait. She's like, I was like, what didn't you like? And she said, the English actors that they dubbed it with were, it just didn't oh, yeah, sound right. Dub. I'm like, why would you watch anything, any foreign film with English dub? It, there's, that's ridiculous. So she totally ruined the experience. So if you watch it, I think it was a setting on her Netflix. Yeah, it, it was is. automatic and like totally ruined the show. <laughs> but I it guess, makes I mean- sense. It makes sense that all these bros are watching it with the English dub. And they're like, oh, man, it's, uh, like whatever. Like, I got a, I got a lot of, you know, yeah. roast beef. I don't know. I don't I don't mind the bros. I got yeah, on paper. I'm 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 a bro, man. I, you no, know, you're not. not I, like I, dude, I've seen Dave Matthews 40 times. I I've watch UFC Dave every month. <laughs> <laughs> I Yeah, no, I get it. But there's, <laughs> it's almost like. Uh, all, all I also all, saw him in college, but I saw him in high school. So I'm not. It's like, I'm it's not like all, 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 all squares. <laughs> all squares are rectangles, but not all not all rectangles are squares. So yeah, I get what you mean. You know what I mean? Like 
Oh, I know. Yeah. So, but it, I'm telling you, man, like the bros, no, you're not a bro. You're not a Wrigleyville bro. Midnight Mass. Let's talk about it. I want to talk about it. Yeah, man. So, I mean, hey, wait. Spoilers. There might be some spoilers for Midnight Mass. If you haven't watched it, it's a seven episode, seven episodes seven. Yeah. on Netflix. Go watch it. It's phenomenal. And it's uh, so it's Mike Flanagan. Haunting of House, House on Haunted Hill. Uh, or Haunting, yeah. Haunting Haunted Hill, Hill House, House. Bly Manor. Uh, Dr. Sleep. Gerald's Game. He's a horror guy. He, he knows his shit. And when he writes his own stuff, it's phenomenal. Hush, the movie Hush. And it's just got a phenomenal cast that he uses a lot of the same actors. And I, the only one I can think of is Katie Siegel, who's the main, one of the main chicks, the one from Hush. That's his wife. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Nice. She's great. Yeah, but, she is. Um, She's really good. And the, um, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, my God. Elliot, too. He's, Elliot. He's, he's like his muse. Um, Henry Thomas. Yeah. I, lo- I love him. And I felt like... This was his best, I thought. The, well, I haven't seen. Well, I started Haunting of Hill House last night. Okay, um, it's good. I didn't. I haven't done Bly Manor. I saw Gerald's Game when it was new. Also, when you watch Hill House, man, pay attention to what's going on in the background because there's right. a, a lot of like weird shit in the background. Uh, yeah, I and, turned it on last night as like Lynn Falls, and Lynn doesn't like scary stuff, yeah. and she's watching Midnight Mass for me. Like I threw it on after she went to sleep one night and i was like i'm gonna you know she's not gonna watch this and then like by episode three i was like oh i should wait because this is so fucking good yeah you know and then i i mean i finished it without her but then i'm like i'm gonna watch it again so we watched the first one and she wasn't sold she's like i'm into it but i'm not in love with it and i was like well watch the second one and she fell asleep i mean it was late so but i think she finished the second one tonight the main guy the preacher and the bald guy shaved head I've never seen those guys before. Yeah, neither have I. Right. Um, I they mean, were, they were so good. Pretty much the whole cast. I didn't. I mean, was new to me. Besides, right. you know, I hate to call him Elliot. I mean, it, it's 40, 40 years. I know. Old, you know, but he he was so good, man. I he felt was like great. He really man. got to he like was, flex. You know, stretches. Yeah. Stretch he he was great. I didn't know it was him until the second episode. Really? Yeah, I didn't Dude, know, I, know it was him right away. The scene at the dinner table when the son comes home. And he just sits there. He doesn't say a word. Yeah, I had like, no idea that was him. He's the just whole nodding time. and like doing these facial expressions. Yeah, he was so very awesome, dead. Like so awesome. I I just gotta say, man, this this I really think this format. I guess this way of doing it, like okay, we're into a limited series. It's seven episodes or however however long it, it's however long it has to be. If it's fifteen episodes, fine. If it's three, fine. Sure. It, but it's and it's got a beginning, middle, and an end. It's closer to a book than it is a movie. You know what right. I mean? Or a TV show. It's just it, it gives you so much time to like, you know, like like movies like like that we watch. Like like you're next is great, right? We, we, we but it doesn't give you a whole lot of time. Like imagine if you really got to sit with these characters for a while and really get to know them, and then they start getting like off. You'd be it. It'd be so much more. You know, and this really get, it's, it really gets you invested in everybody before it starts, you know, taking them out. It's I mean, I totally agree. Today I was listening to a podcast. I don't remember what it was. It was something about Star Wars, but they were talking about it's like and I've heard this multiple times. I hear it frequently where people are like, man, I hope they turn this into a show. I hope they turn this into a show. You don't really hear people say, like, I hope they turn this into a movie anymore, because nope. I think people are starting to appreciate Squid Game is the same. You know, it's like. And a lot of things are the same. Bly Manor, all these, all these shows, as long as there's not a mandated number of episodes, if you give the storyteller, the director, free reign like Netflix does, that's one thing that they do better than anyone is they tell the creator you can do whatever you want, whether it's a movie or a show. And I think this is the way we're going, man. I think you're going to see, and it's, it's unfortunately, it's going to, you know, theaters are going to keep dying out for the most part. Because things are going to go into these limited series because it's just as a storyteller, you can your story can breathe. And as a consumer, we can we can it's so much more of a rich experience. Uh, Yeah, I mean, it's it's it was great, man. I mean, it really man. And everybody, every character, man, but the, the, the cast in this man was unreal. Yeah. Like and I, I don't have the cast in front of me, but like, I mean, nobody knows these people if you're to say their names for the most but part. the uh the the woman that played uh 
what's her name? The, the villain, the um, right, the preacher, the um, the church lady, the church lady. I, I, I forget her name. I forget the character, but man, she just fucking nailed it. She, you hated her, right? Yeah, but she she pulled a. <laughs> she did it great. She was yeah. so good. She it was like the nur- a nurse ratchet thing, man. And sure. I didn't know that anybody was. Oh my god, how the oh, what's her fucking name? what's the name of the woman that played Louise Fletcher? Louise Fletcher played Nurse Ratchet. Okay, and I didn't. So she played Nurse Ratchet in One Flew Over, and it's the same vibe. That whole movie, you're like, oh, what a fucking. And then not to bring up Star Trek, she did it again on Star Trek even better in my opinion but like i thought that was like a louise fletcher thing you know what Dude, i mean you like, know what it you was... know it's, she does that in uh you haven't seen invaders from mars from 1996 no. or whatever she plays this teacher that you're just like oh my god i wanted to kill this woman <laughs> you you'd love that movie but yeah i mean this the the, the church lady she was everybody just, uh, everybody worst. who played you know all the characters were just so well fleshed out just got their chance to like be a character which i think is that sounds so general and vague but that's something that you don't a lot of times especially in movies these characters don't get a chance to like well they're one one note you know what i mean like it's one note characters and boom we gotta move we gotta move like this is like not like even like the town drunk who like you know Um, know, paralyzes halloween right has is he in halloween yeah he's he's uh old kid who has a two second interaction with Michael Myers. Oh, uh, oh but he's the older Lonnie. Movie. Lonnie, that's Lonnie. is that him? I didn't yeah, know crazy, right? Actor. He was so yeah. good in this. Yeah, but that's what I mean. It's like he, you know, you you get the whole rate. He's not like a one note deal. He's yeah, like he's, he's great. You know, you feel bad for him, but you're also like, yeah, I mean, every character is like that. And even and 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 you and and what's cool, all the like not twists, but like everything that happened was like everything was a surprise nothing was like like it wasn't like i figured anything out beforehand or like it yeah. like it was just and it wasn't and they, it wasn't spelled out for either it was like oh. just late oh it was great all right so we already said like spoiler warning so double yeah. spoiler warning because there's a couple of things i want to mention but you've been warned uh, and it's and I, I will say like like kevin just said the show is absolutely worth going in not knowing anything which is what i did yeah i didn't know anything so you didn't. All right. So here it comes. So you didn't. You had no idea that it was vampires. I had no idea it was a vampire show. Okay. I wish I didn't know that it was like a horror show. Well, I mean, Flanagan, though, that's all he does. Yeah, but I didn't. I haven't seen anything else besides. Oh, okay. And Gerald's okay. game. I mean, is arguably, it's you know, I going in. I true. wish I hadn't. Like I showed Lynch the trailer yeah, uh, no. beforehand. Don't watch and the trailers. The, it's a badass trailer. Yeah. But, it's uh she, and she was like okay but she know now she knows going in she wants to know you know what what, what she's going into she doesn't trust you Does, no like, I if mean, you said if you just said look i know what you like i know what you don't oh i do that all the time okay. and she usually trusts me and you know usually it turns out okay yeah. <laughs> but you know that there's been times like you Crazy know strangler <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like when we watch a little shop you know she, we threw on a little shop and she's like this is, is it's a musical seriously she doesn't like musicals it's not she doesn't like musicals but she's got to be prepared to watch a musical oh, okay. like I, you know i can't be like hey well, let's watch this movie and then it's a musical and especially it's like that musical where it's pretty and yeah. she's like i'm not like she's just got to be in the mood for it anyway midnight mass was fucking all the all the twist man and even the um yeah like okay so the priest being the younger you know what was funny my dad watched this before i did and i don't know how he watches tv I don't know what he, how he did. I literally think he turns it on Netflix and the first show that comes up on the like new on Netflix, he's like, yep, we're watching that. Yeah. Cause sometimes like I'll be like, you're watching that show. Really? And he's like, yep. And him and my mom watch it and they're in their, they're in their sixties yeah. and they just, I want to, I want to hear someone. I want to know somebody who is like Catholic and watched this. Oh, I grew up. Catholic. No, I'm saying like Catholic, you know, like staunch, Cemented. I mean, my, my, my mom, what my parents were like that. Cause that's how people were in the, you know, cause the show is very, I, yeah, I wasn't well, an altar boy, but I went a, to church. It's, it's very, <sighs> it's very almost anti-Catholic Catholicism, um, or religion anyway. Yeah, I would say it's more anti-religion yeah. and they just kind of, cause that's the thing they don't, they, that's the thing. There's a lot to criticize the Catholic church for that. They don't touch on. Sure. The obvious drama yeah. stuff, but. Uh, but as far as 
the pillars and the dogmas and the foundation of the church itself like there's the scene you know in the aa meeting uh with the bald guy the main guy and the preacher where they just kind of like go through everything that i've always railed against and it's like good thank you for somebody finally on tv saying this shit which happens a lot yeah especially in liberal it's funny that like yeah where we're at the catholic church is kind of the underdog but i thought that they did a good job of like like obviously mike philanagan if he didn't grow up catholic knows a lot about the church right. it's like i'm sure he did and he you know i really liked that they also like he gives a big badass sermon and you see the whole town get like riled up over right it, you know what i mean like and it was but, I, like and it, it, and it, it showed the appeal of church as well you know it, the appeal the kool-aid the the brainwashing like, yeah, is essentially it is. is what it winds my up mom, being. My mom's a maniac Catholic, and it's gross. I'll just say it. Like, it's very disturbing. It's a cult. This And it's like, to, to see that scene that you're talking about and, like, see firsthand the, just, like, these people getting sucked into this drama of what the preacher is putting out there. It's, it's scary, because that's a huge, huge portion of our society our, co- our country you know all that aside it, it, it is still at its heart an exceptional horror story and the way that they ease you into the supernatural aspect of it yeah is just it's so genius especially visually you know when and you, it's so yeah and it's like, slow did you see um oh God, what, what was the name of jason bateman show on hbo a couple of years ago yeah, um, I haven't seen it. The one that everybody says you should watch. Yeah, it sucks. Really? It's yeah, <laughs> it sucks. It's it, it starts it's, it's off, called like catacombs or Antarctica. Or, no, it's called Zarkos. No, it, oh, I had Adirondax. it. Zachary. You're not, you're not talking about Ozark, right? Ozark. No, that's not it. Ozark. Oh, is good. oh okay. <laughs> Ozark is a show on Netflix. That's like uh, four seasons. Yeah, yeah. It, it's very good. That's the one that everybody's like, yeah, you got to watch it. Yeah, everybody says to watch it because that Stop one's really good. Stop telling me that. I'll watch it. Yeah, that one's really good. The Outsider. Never heard of it. Uh, yeah, so it was uh, it was a limited series. It was four episodes on HBO. It was based on Stephen, a Stephen King thing. Okay. And it sucked. Everybody said it was great. And it starts off like it's going to be like a murder type mystery thing. And it's like, basically, he's a teacher. There's a murder. People say that they saw him do it. But oh, was, you know what? He Don't wasn't spoil in town. This. My brother said this is really good and wants me to watch it. Yeah, I'm curious what you think. I thought it sucked, but other people really <laughs> liked it. Um, so what's the point? The point is that <laughs> what I didn't like about this show is what Midnight Mass does very, very well. Which is what? Well, I can't tell you because it'll ruin the show. Like, oh, okay, okay. Is, is basically, like- yeah, like there's, yeah. The way they the way they reveal You're talking things, about easing into the su- the supernatural yeah, stuff. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay, it's so it feels so natural and like slow, but also like you know what I mean. Like it, it yeah, it was cause... never it was never like oh it's fucking vampires. It's like <laughs> yeah. by the time it's like oh they're vampires. Yeah, like that's like I mean that's late in the series. It's yeah. like episode six or you know like yeah. being like no shit like there's some things in the early on where you could be like well hold on a second what's going on you know because yeah. you see like and that's what i'm talking about is, is genius like i think it's the first episode where the kids go off to the island to like smoke weed and drink and stuff and all this and there's like cats everywhere yeah and like one of the kids like looks over in the bushes and sees these pair of eyes basically like eating a cat but you don't see anything else but the eyes. And then throughout the series, you see stuff like that. And you're like, what the fuck is happening? Like, what is this? Like, what is Well, yeah. The, and like, you know, the when the drug dealer gets it, like, I still wasn't like, I'm like, sure. is it a monster? Is it a, what is this? And like, and, he, and you really still don't know at the end of the series. Is it, is it an angel? Is it a fucking vampire? Is That's it a, the cool thing, man. I mean, what is a, it? I know what you mean. It is a I, vampire. It, I know that you could look at it and be like, well, maybe this is just Flanagan's interpretation of an angel. You know, right. I mean, and, they and never it, say, you know, which is awesome. I love that. But I I mean, it is vampire. My, my, my awesome. yeah, my dad's big critic. I was like, I was once I found out he was watching. I am like, what, what did you think? You know, because he's just not he doesn't watch shit like this. Him and my mom were both like, ah, they the only the only thing I didn't like was the ending. Really? 
And I was like, really? And like, and as soon as they said that, and I was like, really? I, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I, will, I like I the ending. <clears throat> it, it was just a bummer ending. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, it's not a, it's definitely not a happy ending, but, but it's also not a terribly in, in all of Flanagan's series, when you finish Hill House and Bly Manor, they all kind of end on this sort of melancholy note, you know, where it's like, it's not necessarily an unhappy ending, but it's definitely not a happy ending. And to be honest, seven episodes, six and seven is where you really get into the vampire stuff. And it's fine. It's good. It's great. But I, I say that the best part of the series is before they get there. When they're just doing the human story, yeah, and like I agree with yeah. the town and all this stuff, because the people are, it's just so well told and so well acted. It it reminds. I had a conversation one time with Terry Moore, the the writer of like Strangers in Paradise, oh, yeah. and sure, sure. we were talking at a con, and I was talking about how uh, the, when I was writing, uh, the uh, time wise. What, wait, what's what's time wise? I've never that's heard of that. the, the that? graphic novel that I that I wrote that you can buy on Amazon. You wrote you a graphic novel novel yeah, I, called yeah. Time Wise. <laughs> you wrote yes, and you drew it. Yeah, and it's yeah, and it's available to buy. Yep, it sure is. It's on Amazon. Where can you I can buy this? For on Amazon. You can look for it on Amazon. Do I search Kevin Kroll or do I search? Time-wise? I think that's what you search for. I think you could type in. Yeah, I think you could type in either one. I'm not and, sure. And this is a. And the link is, like, is the link is on my Instagram. On your Instagram, you have an Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Yeah, I do. Yeah, the other. Kevin what is Kroll. your Instagram, Kevin? The other Kevin Kroll. It's uh, the other K- Kevin Kroll. Yeah, Carrie. We talked about this last week, but uh, maybe we did. I don't. I don't care. But <laughs> yeah. It's, do you uh, do you ever post about your original graphic novel on Instagram? Not no, very rarely. <laughs> I did. I did when uh when I when I I first started going to con. Yeah, I started when I first printed it and i was bringing it to cons and you know trying to sell it to people yeah trying uh, to sell your original graphic novel that you yeah wrote but then the, the, for the intent of getting and, into other people's hands to read sort of yeah i mean you know, right. don't read it that's great but anyway when i was talking to him about it <laughs> about rights writing in general and i said you know because he wrote strangers in paradise for a yeah. very 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 long time yeah. and i was like do you get the sense like eventually like you know you know the characters so well that like they write themselves almost and he's like yeah that's exactly how it is is like i don't I, he's like i don't even feel like i'm writing the characters anymore i'm just coming up with scenarios and that's how i write now he's like i come up with things that happen in the story and then it plays out in my head how how they would react sure and i that's how it felt on this show yeah is like it's just you know what i mean like they're so these characters are so well developed you know what i mean that like everything that happens is just a natural progression of like everything they do sure you know like nothing feels forced nothing feels you know everything even even characters to pull a 180 i I think i also got the feeling that there was a lot of not what do you call it freestyle um not freestyle (laughs) ad libbing what's the word i'm looking for yeah ad libbing and um anyway off the cuff stuff i doubt it you know, really, because like the preacher, I felt like, especially in the AA meetings, I've, I've it felt like it was just like, OK, here's the scenario. Go. And I, it was great. But I felt I can't like that was, guy's not more shit, dude. I was what? Yeah. Where? What, where I, where I, I looked he, him up. He's not in nothing, fucking anything. Nothing. And and he's like not young. He's not necessarily. He's like in his 40s. He, man, I will watch anything that guy is in. That Absolutely. guy was fantastic. Absolutely. They, he he made the show for me. I mean, everybody was great, but he you know, he you know, he was the best. You know who really and the scene that I still, when I think about it, it gives me chills. You know, again, spoilers, but like I forget the bald head guy, the main the main one of the main guys, Riley, Riley. So the see his death scene, mm-hmm. fucking a dude. Like you know, he keeps having this dream, and mm-hmm. then the dream is realized. He he basically makes his dream come true sitting in that boat. And, you know, he always talks about he can never see the end of it, but that she's in the other end of the boat. And then the way that Flanagan arranged that scene to where (laughs) to where the episode he's in the dream talking about the dream and he and he sees the girl that he killed. And then it's a hard cut and he's just on fire. And it's like, oh, yeah, she's screaming. And she's screaming. And then then let the scream go over the credits. Oh, my God. It was. 
like the entire like, credits Flanagan, like it goes black yeah, yeah. she's screaming that's flanagan dude he's a genius when i saw that that'll probably stick with me for the rest of my like, life. it's Just a beautiful scene about him is. like about like you know oh he's forgiven for like yeah. what you know all this great shit all these great vibes like you you're okay with him dying right here because it's but like you okay don't, good you don't but you have no idea that that's what's coming Oh, well, but you by know? the time when, once he said, like, I came out here so that I can't get away, I was like, oh, that's what he's doing. See, like, I, I got even I even still like I, I, I realized that he's you know, he's like she's like, I'm out. We're out here alone on the water. No one can hear us. Why did you bring me out here? And she's thinking, like, are you going to so kill, you gonna kill me? Yeah. And then and then, yeah, like you said, he's like, no, it's so that I can't get away. I'm still thinking metaphorically that that's how he's speaking metaphorically. Like can't get away from my sins or whatever, because because they're also showing this back and forth between the girl that he killed, and then all of a sudden it's like, and it, like you said, it's just like so peaceful and almost like a moment of forgiveness for him for the yeah. character because that's what he's been struggling with this whole time, and then it's just wake from the yeah dream, that you're on hard fire, cut cut screaming oh my god, and then the next episode picks up with her you know in the boat looking at his ashes and it man it was just so smart. And good filmmaking, you know, just I mean, it's great. And it was that's I think the end of the fifth episode. Yeah, that's episode. And five. you just take out your main character like, oh, okay, yeah. well, now yeah. what do we do here from here? You know what I really like? I really, you know, you've got the sense that, he, OK, he turns into a vampire and he's left with like dilemma. Like, OK, here you're going to you're going to want to you got to kill people now. Right. Like it sucks, but that's what you got to do. And you're not going to be able to control it. And this this, this. You know, he like contemplates it for like an evening and then just decides like fuck that and like to and and it seems that he's kind of rewarded for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And his parents are the are, you know, without discussing whatever, they're left with the same decision later on in the show. And sure. they make the same call. Like they're like, Yeah, we're not gonna do that. Like it's just a really cool oh man, yeah, what a show. Yeah. It's great. I think that I could honestly, like I could go and do a whole episode breaking down episode by episode yeah. of the show, but it's, it's one of those things where it's like, we've talked about it a lot, but go watch it and enjoy it. Like, I mean, hopefully you've seen it if you're listening to this, cause yeah. there's a lot that you can, there's a, I think it also goes to show. We should put in a timestamp by the way, at the yeah, viewer, say yeah. like, Hey, fast forward to this definitely, point. I'll do that. But it definitely, it goes to show, man, that, the culture that we are now in is such an impatient culture and such a like, not some, it's not just that we're now, now, now binge, 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 next thing, next thing. This, this series, the night mass is like an example of patience in storytelling that I think we need more of. And, and not just, not just upon viewing it, but also going into it. I, had heard it. Joe was like, my brother was like pressing me, like, watch this, watch this, watch this. And it got to the point where I was like, I'm going to watch it. It's mm -hmm. Flanagan. Shut up. <laughs> um, and I needed to get there on my own, but I wanted to watch it before Halloween. So, cause it was like a thing like that. And also because I didn't want it spoiled. And I think that a lot of people nowadays just don't care. I mean, that's kind of why I want to watch squid game is that in case I ever do what, like I, I it's 30 memes that I don't get. Sure. Sure. And but I'm and, afraid that like I'm afraid that some of it's going to be spoiled because I've seen these memes. But Midnight right. Mass isn't people aren't flipping out about it like they should. You know, I you're right. I feel like more people flipped out about Haunted of Hill House. Yeah, that was his first one. And I think there was a lot more hype behind it. I had no idea this was even coming out. And I'm a big Flanagan fan. I, it I, looks I, like I, he's going to do it every year. Right. This is the third hope, one. Yeah. In three third years. One. I hope so. But it's just it's just such a real treat when you can go into it and just be like the only time, the only other time really recently that I remember feeling this way. And I know you don't like these movies. I, I was in the theater and I was watching split the Shyamalan movie. Yeah. Which I'm a big fan of that whole series. Unbreakable is one of my favorite movies of all time. And that was 15 years ago or something. And then all of a sudden you're watching split the next Shyamalan movie. I had no idea. I just thought it was a, of its own thing. And then mm -hmm. in the very, very end, they connected to Unbreakable and, I, and my brain exploded. Yeah, a lot of and, people. I, I got that. With, and with, with this, you know, like it or not, it was just like a treat. This, uh, this series, like, I really hope that people get to experience it 
that way as a treat and just like you don't need to know everything about everything you don't need to watch any trailers you don't need to like talk about it before you watch it just fucking watch it i think if more people went into their media that way they'd enjoy, they'd absorb more of it and enjoy it more so oh and i hope that flanagan if you're listening to this he would be so perfect to do a werewolf thing i he's done ghosts he's done vampires i would love to see him do werewolves man because werewolves need we don't need more zombie stuff they need better representation yeah they do. you know big time big time especially man there's just nothing really i mean there's not a lot there's some on with the show you're next this is yep. our uh, our letter y it was kevin's letter oh let me grab my notebook it's like you're next you're next 2011 yeah uh adam wingard so let's yeah. talk let's talk about adam wingard real so quick. yeah i got a lot to say about adam wingard and he's got an the interest- whole the whole posse there's a whole crew of guys that I was very, very into what, a, few this year, or? a few years before this came out. Okay. Why? Uh, okay. So there was a kind of a, it wasn't a movement, but for per se, but it was a, it was a bunch of movies that were coming out around the same time by a lot of the same people. And they were all kind of in each other's movies. Uh, the mumble core movies. Do you remember this? The what? They were called mumble core movies. Mumble core. Okay. It was. Yeah. And it sounds like a bunch of bros. Well, you know, I mean, they were a bunch of like just guys that were like they didn't have any money and they were putting each other in in all their movies and they were making these small, little, tiny, independent movies. Most of them took place in Chicago. Um, Really? Yeah. One of the guys is Joe Swanberg, who's in this movie. Um, Yeah, I, I, I saw one of his movies. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Probably in 2000 eight maybe uh and i was just like blown away uh the duplass brothers kind of come out of this school i know them uh creep yeah they win you've seen both of those right i've seen creep i've seen everything you've done i've seen the creep or creeps and creep two seen the puffy chair i've seen everything uh puffy chair is what put them on the map is that a chair that somebody's hiding in it kills people no (laughs) (laughs) they they like like a lot of these guys, they 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 dabble in horror, but they don't. They, they, most of it is relationship type stuff, um, which is what I was into, like you know, ten years ago. Like you're not you're not into relationships anymore. I mean, I, I am. I mean, Does your wife long, know this? <laughs> <laughs> I retired. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, Adam Wingard, Joe Swanberg, these guys, the guy, uh, one of the they they all kind of Lynn Shelton. They were they they kind of were making movies like this. So I was way way into them and. Uh, oh, and uh, Simon Barrett, the guy that wrote this, also is sounds familiar. He he writes basically when Adam Wingard's as best. It's when he's when he's got Simon Barrett writing with him. He's he wrote the guest, right? Uh, he wrote Auto Erotic with Joe Swanberg, and which is good. I don't remember a whole lot about it. I remember I liked it though. It's pro- it's not. I wouldn't go there first. Oh, they did the VHS movie. Right. Now, well, there's two of them. The but, co- there's like four of them. The new one well, just came out. Yeah, I, I get. I, from what I hear, I heard two wasn't great, and I heard three and four are barely watchable. Two, but, uh, one of the one of the sequels is actually pretty good. I I don't know if it's two or three, but four, the new one is garbage. They, they, they did. Uh, they did the new Blair Blair Witch, uh, right. which wasn't great. Nope. But I wonder how much of that had to do with them. Um, he did Kongzilla. And then yeah, and they got him to do. Got to, you would think after that was his, Witch, that was his breakout, like his into mainstream. Right. I there. mean, yeah, it was. I mean, you would think whatever Hollywood's think, doing that, man. They they go for these indie directors and they say, "Hey, what would you do with a zillion dollars?" And they do. Shit. I think it's just like, hey, you know, we're how to point a camera, right, and tell people exactly what, yeah. what to wear. Like, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. ABC, so yeah. ABC is a death. You ever, you see that? Yes. So the ABC is a death. Did a movie called a, uh, a horrible way to die. Again with Swanberg, John um, Schnapp did an ABC's of Death. Yeah, yeah, one of one of those was his. Yeah, man, it's uh, yeah, these, I really really like these guys. Uh, uh, I noticed also in his, I don't know if he directed or what, but Fear Street, nineteen ninety four. There's a trilogy of movies on Netflix. They're called Fear Street. Yeah, and I've seen. Year. Them. I haven't they, seen them, but I've seen them on there. I've been trying to find somebody that's seen them to see if they're worth watching, but I guess I think I've heard good things. The other thing that Joe Swanberg, he's kind of the 
head thing of this mumblecore thing. He he plays Drake, the like shitty brother. Okay, ne- that isn't Dexter. Lo- De- Dexter Julian is. His <laughs> he does look like Dexter. Um, he did he he did a few movies within the last couple of years. I think you would really like. Okay. Um, they're super Chicago based. He did them with Joe Johnson. One called Digging for Fire. One called Win It All. Give it a shot. They did that show Easy on Netflix. Okay. Uh, if you like that show, which I like and hate that show, but anyway, yeah, it. it's a lot of like hipster bullshit, but it's also really, really good. Here. Yeah. Get out of your hipsters. It's a lot of hipster bullshit. No, we let him. <laughs> you can listen to our show. Yeah, if but you, it's also it's also really, really good at the same time. It's just you got to tolerate some hipster bullshit anyway. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so I'm a big fan of these guys. Uh, right. If you haven't seen the guest, the guest is I need to see it. That's amazing. like that's like great. His most critically acclaimed. Um, I don't know which one I like better, this or the or the guest. Um, I'm not as big a fan of this movie as you are. And you and I, I acknowledge that this is a good movie. And I saw it when it came out. I haven't seen it since. And so. I, th- I think I kind of when it, so with newer horror movies, I tend to dismiss them right away. Right. Because they're all like, like with this one. I, I hated the poster. I hate the title. This movie. <laughs> yeah. You're next. I think that's yeah. Cool. I, think it's cool. I mean, I like it now that I've seen it, I guess. But I think that's honestly that's my one. I don't know. I don't have a lot of Christmas Christmas of this movie, but that that kind of is one of my only ones is that like I don't like the mass. I don't like the uh, like I think the masks don't serve any purpose aside just to be creepy. The home invasion aspect of it. There isn't a home. Inv- I, I don't know. I can't think of a home invasion movie that doesn't have masks. Yeah, there's the funny game. but I would say like you ever seen funny games, uh, Tim Roth. Is he in Funny Game? Yeah. Yeah, 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 he is. Uh, I haven't seen it, though. It's fucked up. <laughs> it's really, really fucked up. I heard up. it was good. It is, but oh, it's, okay. it's fucked up. Like Greasy Strangler fucked up? I mean, just like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's. Nah. I mean, nothing, nothing. You got to stop Strangler comparing things up. to Greasy Strangler. Yeah, because there's nothing like it's that. It's its own movie. It's its own <laughs> thing. It's its own thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, I should have brought that up in what we've been watching. I watched the David Pumpkins. I can't believe I didn't bring it up. I watched the David Pumpkins holiday special for no reason. If I didn't, if we don't talk about it. Flawless. For those that don't know, me and Adam completely disagree on David S. Pumpkins. You didn't like the cartoon, <laughs> dude. It's so good. It, it was. Okay. I mean, it was. It was the best. Put to this it was the best thing watch, I've seen. Of, watch it, it involving David S. Pumpkin. Watch it with your kids. Did you watch it with your kids? My kids are my kids are one and a half and yeah, six it's, months. It's, it's like G rated. It's G rated. Yeah, but like they don't they don't uh, they don't have a brain like they're not. Yeah, they're not going to watch it. They, I can't watch anything. All right. Anyway, but, David S. Pumpkins. Is I mean, not to say you need a brain like that. Yeah, fucking. So, I, I mean, whatever. Fucking David S. Pumpkins. I'm not into. <laughs> it's because he's his own thing, man. All right, I'll stop. That was. T- <laughs> <laughs> that what you just did is funnier than anything <laughs> i've seen david pumpkins do it's the it's the he's funny because it's like it really is like what the fuck are you <laughs> who get are it you? no i get it they uh, keep telling uh, me I, they keep telling I me know, that the I whole know, time <laughs> no this uh, is why it's funny <laughs> like shut up show just be funny <laughs> i'll figure it out <laughs> <sighs> anyway um all right so this cast is just a bunch of like julians to me like they're they're like it's the dad is julian senior the the fat guy is well his name's crispy so and then you've got like dexter julian you've got confused julian the guy who's just always looking confused the brother you know the yeah the bad guy and they're all yeah they're, they're good but it's like i've never seen a movie with so many julian's in the cast it's weird it's weird i mean i I was kind of used to it because i've seen other shit these guys have done i mean yeah. it's all it's all yeah no names you know julian but it like i i thought everybody was really good for what you know sure it was i kind of I, I i liked it there there were things i you know i don't want to say things i it wasn't things I, I i i didn't like there were things i was hoping for that didn't that the movie just didn't pan up being that kind of movie directions. It didn't take. Yeah. Okay. Like there were things I was like, Oh, this is, I really liked the idea of like, okay, we're going to have everybody over like the, the dinner scene. I thought was, 
Oh, well, we should mention uh, the parent. Yeah, I mean. Oh, Barbara Crampton, dude. Barbara Crampton plays the mom. Fucking yeah. Barbara Crampton. She's awesome. Free animator from beyond. When I first saw this, I had no idea. Well, I, I had seen Barbara Crampton before, but I didn't realize like. I didn't know it was her. Her. And I had her, seen the movie. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize her heft, or, you know, her place in the horror community. When oh, yeah, I, she's a When I deal. first saw this back in 2011, uh, you know, I was like, oh, Barbara Crampton. I don't know. Barbara Crampton. Okay. I, I didn't realize I had seen her in reanimator and all this other stuff, but she, I just, I love her when she shows up. I'm like, yeah, this is going to be at least watchable. She's got a new movie on Netflix. I want to see vampire movie. The gist of the movie is just family meeting up after not seeing each other for a long time at this like summer home, I guess. Yeah. They're, it's a rich family, rich family, like super rich. The dad's retiring and he's, yeah. um, and they say all, he he works for a defense contractor, so he's got just a shitload of money. And there's three brothers and a and a daughter. Yes, and, and they, they all, all have and all of their significant others. Yes, and they're all meeting at the house for like a dinner and stuff like that. And they haven't seen each other in a long time, and one or more, two of the brothers are sh- they're all shitheads. The whole family are shitheads yeah. except for the parents. They seem pretty cool. Two ah. of the, I I have criticisms of of the really? parents, okay. but go ahead. Right. Yeah, but you know, anyway, no, that, that just later. big picture, big picture. Two of the sibling, two of the brothers plan basically to kill the entire family so that they can get the inheritance early, and they hire the worst uh, soldiers, ex soldiers ever ever hired <laughs> to pull this thing off, and <laughs> but they do run into a roadblock in, in one of the characters. Yeah. Um, and so chaos ensues and it turns into a, like a really good version of a Three Stooges movie, I guess. Sort of. I mean, I yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it, that, that's it's a it's a good movie. I mean, it's a good movie. Um, but watching it the second time around, I was able to nitpick. So anyway, yeah, me too. That's and, that's that's the gist. And of there it. were things that like, I mean, I obviously watch like, OK, like, for example, that's the two brothers, you know, that's something that is revealed at the end of the movie uh, what the, the second fact brother, that it's right? one of the brothers is revealed about you know three quarters of the way of the movie yeah. and then the that the second brothers in on it is the big reveal at the end although there's something that happens where it's like oh he's totally in on it and yeah. i had forgotten i had forgotten almost this entire movie which was cool because i was able to like kind of not go into it fresh but be like oh i forgot about that i forgot about yeah that. me too so i wanted to the movie opens with this dude, the neighbor and his girlfriend or whatever banging. And that's the first kill. These, they get murdered. The neighbor is played by Larry Fassenden. You know Mm -hmm. who I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So this dude, who is this dude? Because I looked him up and you see him in everything and he's won all these awards and everybody in the horror community loves this guy. I have no idea why I should love this guy. I've seen him in other Joe Swanberg stuff. I think. You know who but, I'm talking about, right? Yeah, the guy. Yeah, the neighbor. The, the, so he's like this horror dude who like is just he's in all this stuff. When you see him, you know, he's going to die. He kind of like only does short things. And it's like I get the feeling when people have him in their movie, they're like, oh, we got Larry Fassenden to do a scene. But I have no idea why I should like this guy. And I feel like I'm going to be canceled by the horror community by not knowing. But I mean, I don't know him either. I mean, maybe yeah. I'm. Fair maybe enough. I'm just uh, maybe we just don't know what we're talking about. Maybe we, <laughs> maybe we just we're, maybe we're stuck. horribly unqualified to be doing this. Or maybe we're so far above. Um, so anyway, it opens up with the neighbors, the, the, the masks taking out the neighbors, I guess, in an effort to make sure that there's no help to come to this family while they do their, right. their thing. Then it goes. Then we get introduced to the family as they arrive at the house. You yeah. Take us through. Yeah. So they go and uh, you meet. You know, the parents show up to this. I guess it's a summer home. It's a giant fucking house. Yeah. One by one, the, the kids start showing up with their significant others. Um, you got Crispin, who's dating the uh, closest thing we have to a main character. Aaron. Is he? Crispin is his name. We can call him Crispy. If you, oh, you know. Crispy. Yeah. I, they, they were saying Crispin? Crispin. Yeah. Like Crispin Glover? Yeah. I thought his name was Crispy. I really thought his name <laughs> was Crispy. I'm like... And I thought it kind of played into his parents are calling him crispy the whole movie. I thought it kind of played into the the fat jokes that they kept saying, you know, no, his name is Crispin. He's like, I've got a round head. That's why I look fat. And his brother's like, Dexter's like, you, you look fat because of all the fat. 
or like yeah. the fat makes you whatever. <laughs> I thought I thought Joe Swan. So yeah, the other brothers is, is uh Dexter Julian is a uh, Joe Swanberg, independent director. He plays Drake. I think he um, was the best. He's the, I did too. He was he was great. He was really yeah. good. He just plays he's a dick, the, but he's he was the best. The shitty, it. but just plays that guy. Yeah. You know, everyone knows that guy. And he kind of comes around at the end a little bit, but sort of, yeah. But and that's the that's not my criticism of the movie. Well, I'll get in, and then or he gets killed off by an even shittier character. Well, that's why, yeah. Like so his, his, his the other his brother, brother Felix. Is the, the yeah, shit is confused which Julian. Is a, yeah, his name's Felix, and he's <laughs> the thing about him is like he's kind of quiet and kind of like whatever. And he's got this. His significant other is this character uh, Z. It's this oh, girl. She's the worst. And yeah, you the kind second you, you meet her. Well, you could have taken. Honestly, she she's, almost gives the whole game away because, she's, like, she's yeah, yeah. she doesn't really serve any purpose. There are scenes that are better that because she's in them, but it's only because like it makes it more realistic that like like when she's fighting two people and so and stuff like that. But like she's second, just so like evil and though. shitty. It's, yeah. As soon as you see her, you're like something's up with her. And, she's smoking a cigarette, and the mom and she meets the mom for the first time. And the mom's like, "Oh hi," and she's like, she's "She just not. blows the smoke up, doesn't blows say anything." It's like, what the it fuck? gives you a bad vibe? And like the thing is, in a movie like this, you would think like I it was so blatant. I was like, that must be a red hair. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she can't, but she it doesn't wasn't. care to meet right her boyfriend's it, it, parents. It, 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 it was just kind of whatever. Yeah. It almost, I guess, now watching it now, it's obvious. Oh, and then there's like sister who's barely in the movie. Oh, she was, um, she was like, she was this, her death scene leading up to her death scene. Yeah. It's it was like, man, somebody rough. just slapped this chick. Like she, where she's like, nobody listens. It's like, ah, oh, please just yeah. kill her off. <laughs> but Crispy's girlfriend, who's the basically the main character, it's Australian, Ar- the- Australian Army. Yeah, she's Jason Bourne. Yeah. Uh, in her spare straight time, up. basically, straight up, she's she was. You find out how she's she's basically way more equipped to handle it. Well, some shit starts going down. This is this is what's cool. Is the move? I I I I kept going back and forth. I'm thinking like, I I almost wouldn't have put. I thought about it and I was like, what, you know, would this movie be better without that opening scene? Which of, opening like, scene? The, the murders. Neighbors? Yeah, to have like a movie where it's like, yeah. You know, like, have you ever seen the Family Stone? Yeah, I don't know, a long time ago, a while ago. It's got uh, Craig T. Nelson. Yeah, Craig T. Nelson and uh, Dan Keaton. Yeah, Jess. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, imagine that movie starts how it opens, and then like twenty five minutes in, somebody just starts shooting the crossbows into the kitchen. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, oh, dude, holy, okay, this is the kind of movie it is. Like, it's a great point that I didn't think about. Like, I kind of like that idea to like. If you had left that off, then the opening scene, yeah, you get that. That's a you great get that, example. Like, you whoa, get the family whoa, stone. Whoa, 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 yeah. And it's not, and it's early enough that it wouldn't have been like it's not dust till dawn where it might, yeah, <laughs> alienate your audience. No, it, you know something's gonna happen. It's called your next, and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And but then again, I mean, you know, it it, it is an important plot point. You know that they have to take out the neighbors. But I guess, I guess you could have. You could have done you it later. You could, you could have had that reveal anyway when she, because that's the other thing. When she, you know, later on in the movie, one of the characters gets away and gets to the neighbor's house. And, it, it's, and a, it's super creepy because the music is still playing from the beginning of the movie. And it, 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 it's a really good like, vibe and it's it's creepy. But you could have had that without the opening scene. You know what I mean? You that, could have just when, moved. Then it. when she finds the dead body, it's like a holy shit. You know what I mean? Like all the neighbors right. are dead. You could have just moved it further into the movie. Right. We knew the neighbors were dead when she showed up there. So it was not tensionless. It was just like. It's a great scene. I love when she finds them because the punch, the way it's, it's a great punch that he punches her in the face. Yeah. And she like, it's like a square to the nose punch. And, That's, and, yeah. and it's a character that you're like, she's, it's that shitty. It's, oh, it's, it's the a, shitty chick. It's who's Swanberg's like, wife. Right. Who's like. I couldn't listen to that Australian chick's voice. Yeah, she's longer. just kind of a bitch. Yeah, I mean, it's like get the fuck out of here. But yeah, so before all this goes down, there's this. So the, the, all these people are showing up. They're all having dinner and they're arguing. And I thought that dinner scene was great. It was just, it was yeah. so, it was so, it was just so real. Brothers are arguing. Brothers are intentionally being an asshole. I mean, like they're 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 
purposely getting under each other's skin. I believe these guys were brothers. And then, and yeah, and then fucking arrows just start flying in. Like there's some, the there's some really, some of the dialogue in that scene is like, um, when they're talking about like Crispy's, you know, a teacher and we find out that Australian army is like his student, uh, Dexter, like mumbles under his voice, like, oh, it's un- unprofessional. And yeah. like, what? And like, just his delivery of like the little jabs that he throws out. Yeah. Uh, makes his character like what it is, you know, worth, worth paying attention to and like worth going through him being a dickhead. Like, yeah. I mean, and, and then he's like talking to his sister's boyfriend, who's like a documentary filmmaker. Oh man. Tariq is like, and he's just like just a worthless piece of shit, but he's just like, I make documentary <laughs> films and he's like, what do, what do you mean? Documentaries. And then he's just like, what do you say about uh, underground? And he's like, no, they played a lot of underground film festivals. Yeah. Like, what does that mean? Like they they show movies underground. Like he's just being totally obtuse just to be a totally, you know what I love. I love commercials. I think they're just the highest. Everything he says about the commercials is like, like just to be because the guy can't be like, well, you're an asshole because he's Tariq's at dinner. Face Tariq. Like there's a scene where he like turns and he's just like, what the fuck? You're like, <laughs> oh yeah, this brother is a dickhead, but also you're like a pretentious idiot. Yeah, you know, like with your underground. That's what you do. You showed. You made one movie that was showed at one underground film festival and you call yourself like a movie maker. It's like, yeah, but it, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. And, Which I'm I was, sure and, he's, and he's wearing a douchey scarf. Like yeah. it, it, this scene, I'm watching that too and be like, I hope I don't deal with this fucking guy the whole movie. And I don't because and then he gets Dude, up. He goes out like, boom, he's gone. Yeah. He gets up. He looks out the window. He's like, what the fuck? It takes an arrow to the eye. It's like, holy shit. And then. Then arrows just start flying into this fucking room and they're like, and that's another cool thing about, I like about this movie is like, I don't know, every situation felt like, okay, what do you, what do you do now? You know what I mean? Like everything felt like what would happen to real people, you know? Like, yeah, I, I agree. There's also a couple, there's also, I was really surprised that they did this and I don't think it was intentional where in all the Friday 13th movies and all the, all the slasher movies, some shit's going on where everybody's in one house, some shit's going on in one room and everybody in the other room is looking around for flashlights and they don't hear what's going on in the other room. And it's like, yeah. there's a lot of that going on. Yeah. Um, and and to me, like that was the, other, it was, a, I don't know. That was another big thing with me. And I don't know the dad. That's a perfect the, example. Like the dad, like to, to me, like, I don't know. I mean, but then again, I mean, people are different. Maybe not everybody's like me or everybody, whatever you would think. I thought maybe maybe put an arrow in, in, in the dad's leg or something and make it so that he can't run or something, because I don't know, man, I'm not sending my daughter out into that shit. You know what I mean? Like, there's well, the no dad way was I don't hurt. care. The dad did get hurt. It, it, was he hurt enough? It was his leg. I think he did. Is that what it, it was? Yeah. Well, he then, did yeah get then an arrow or something me. happened to his leg early on and he couldn't run. The reason they chose the girl was because she was a track runner in high school or college. And that's why she get, has that breakdown where she goes like right before she she's like taking her shoes off. She's like, nobody ever trusts me or something like yeah. that. It's like, shut up. Yeah. Because you know? she wanted it, to do that. She wanted to help. So, yeah, she goes running out. They, <laughs> they set up like a, a tripwire, like at like neck level. And it was like the first of many like home alone traps. Totally, man. Uh I wrote, but, I wrote that down but she that one a, that's one of the worst man can you imagine like that's the only one that i'm like logistically i don't think that would work why not well unless you knew who was coming out that's true you know like people but if it heights, caught you at your eyes or anywhere on and, your face it would, and how would you know they would come I, I guess like yeah i mean you would think like they're gonna come running out or whatever um but yeah I guess you would have to be running though for it to do damage. So they would have right, to but know that hypothetically, I think that's what they were planning on. Like people are going to come running out of the house. I have but, that. Why wouldn't you run out of the front door, all this other stuff? I mean, right. whatever. But so they do it and they do a lot of smart stuff. Like they grab the chairs to like block the arrows and all that stuff. All at the suggestion of Australian Army. Like she, that's when she, it's like, boom, it's instant. She snaps into porn yeah. mode and she's like, take take the chair and hold it up and go across and use it as a shield yeah it's, it, it's she she at was first she, it comes off as like a little bit tongue-in-cheek 90s action star it's like is, is this supposed to be are we supposed to take this serious that she's so capable you know right like overly capable and then we find out that she was raised in like a she was raised in like a compound. yeah like a survivalist like community 
you know what I did really like though that I um and this movie does this a lot. Like, okay, so Tariq takes the arrow to the eye, and everybody's like, Holy shit, they all just freak the fuck out, and you know, and whatever. When the girl dies, when when the sister dies, they're all like in shock and in like mourn. Like they it's a real react. Like the mother like loses her shit. She's losing her mind. Everybody wants it somebody they know and like a part of their family. It's like a like it's it's how you would people, you know, like that's the big, you know, in all these movies. I mean, in what movie did I just watch? We're like someone di- you know someone dies in the next scene the people are joking around you know what i mean like yeah. their and their best friend was murdered 10 minutes ago you, they like you they let their characters like sit in it like dude, your, your your daughter just got fucking killed by you know right. getting her throat slit like right in front of you like it's right. pretty wild you know i think the dad sells it the best like he's he's i really he, i think he's one of the better parts of the movie yeah um he well, was really good yeah convincingly why convincing wise and then later swanberg does it when they tell him his wife's dead you know yeah like that was, that's a good like, scene what, the what, the, what, what the fuck are you talking about like you know right. like so they take crampton she's freaking out mom she's freaking they take freaking out they take her upstairs this is one of those it's a little too uh friday the 13th it's like which i love but they they split up this thing is yeah. going on and earlier in the movie we forgot to mention that she hears something upstairs so they already had they're like she already thinks that there's someone in the house. Well, they kind of established that she's mentally right. Like emotionally kind of fucked up. She's because like, and going like they say that, that she's going through something or yeah. Like, or like or something like that. She hears something upstairs. And one of the kids is like, why is mom crying in the driveway? Right. Right. And like, it's just kind of implied like, eh, maybe she's kind of, who she's knows what's going on with her. Whatever. Yeah. But they split, they go, they take her dad takes her upstairs and it's like you, this, horrific thing is going on you just lost your daughter just died from a clothesline to the neck Tariq took an arrow and you're gonna split up that makes no sense yeah in ri- right. writing writing wise you know uh, yeah i agree in the in the 80s fine because we needed to split everybody up but now it's just kind of like what are you doing and then they give we get this sweet homage to idle hands <laughs> With the dude under the hand under the bed, remember at the opening yeah. with the parents. Sure. I'm sure this was an homage <laughs> to idle hands, uh, which is I think this is a great scene because when yeah. they sh- when you first see that hand come out, you don't catch it unless because it's so subtle, you know, and it's dark, and that hand reaches out and then the guy crawls out and yeah. mach- machetes her to the face. Yeah, and then again they all run up there. And uh, again, they they have to all sit in it, man. And like yeah. the dad loses his shit. Yeah. How how one would if he found his wife with a fucking machete in her face. Sure. And just the you're next on the wall. And like you know, I get it. It's creepy. It's a horror movie. I don't know. To me, it took it took it it took me out of it. It's like like, wh- like why why would you do why why would you why would that? you do that okay. why would you take the time like you just she screamed she, she was screaming. screaming so they're coming you know people are coming up. You're going to write your next on the wall with 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 the machete and get out of there like the only way that. Yeah, I totally agree. And I thought the same thing and I wrote that. But the only way it works, the only way it's believable or or like, yeah, okay, I could see that is because we later find out that these three guys are at least two of them are brothers, but Mm -hmm. they're ex military and they're like just white trash assholes, weird uh, military enthusiastic enthusiastic people so i could see him being a little uh twisted and being like i'm gonna mess these people up so i'm gonna write this on the wall i don't know i guess it's in character for that guy i mean i get and, and logistically it like, doesn't work yeah the, the masks don't work logistically either but again like maybe they're that oh. kind of weirdo that they like to wear the mask what's the um, movie what's the movie with uh scott speedman and Liv tyler and a home invasion with masks the strangers yeah right mm-hmm. is that a good movie people really like it um i i've never i seen don't it. remember much from it i remember thinking it was overrated but then again i could be wrong i hate that i know every actor that's in every movie that i haven't seen <laughs> you know it's like what the hell people do really like that movie i need to check uh, it out sometime i like scott speedman a lot he's your favorite right i go, i go back and forth underworld he's underworld two he's awesome yeah you know how i am with the underworld movies dude one and two are really good should watch it again. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so then, what? They, so then, Chris Ben attempts to he says, "I'm going to go get a car. I'm going to run out. I'm going to get the car and come back for you guys, or whatever. Or go get cops." 
Drake's wife goes run. We talked about the scene already. She runs to the neighbor's house. She just goes bonkers and runs. Almost gets away. Gets almost. I mean, there's a lot of really great deaths in this movie. She, this is a really good one. You know, this guy beats her ass. He throws her around. Great punch. Oh, yeah, great punch. Throws her through a glass table. And then just like, <laughs> I mean, it was pretty raw, man. You know, just a big axe, just head on, hand, head, a foot on the head, and then just like, Putts, just I, I want golf, to, golf yeah. swing. A lot of people don't realize that that's that's actually called an all for splitting wood. At work, we call them um we we use them at work, but we call them uh cutters, and we have sledgehammers that we call malls. It's got the sledgehammer on the other end. Yeah, what do but you we, use yeah, them for at work? At the third rail, um, we have the so there's these um basically in order to transfer electricity from one rail to the next. There's these little uh, electrical bonds on the side of the rails and sometimes they fall off or they get old and shitty and we have to cut them off. So you take this big ass ax thing and just we take it? an ax and we put it, well, we put it on top and then we hit it with the, the mall, which is the sledgehammer. And we do that. That's how we take that part off. Or, I mean, it sounds the, so futuristic and science. It's not. I mean, I'm surprised. You're, I'm surpri- I know you're, you're, you're hitting I'm surprised things. that there's not like a newer way to do that. Oh no, man! It's <laughs> it's it's the same way we did it, that they did in the 20s. So yeah, yeah. I mean, and when we got to take out the chair, the chairs are what the things are called that hold up the third rail. Okay, they're called chairs, and we knock them out with with those. <laughs> like that's we crazy. Just swing them like golf clubs. That's crazy. So that's what you do. You just swing one of these things around all day. I used to. I don't anymore. Oh, okay. I'm not in the third rail department anymore. But you, I was. You just sit there with your many hands years. folded and you go like, swing that. No, no, I'm not even in the department anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hit it there. I, Hit I it again. And then I was on the emergency. I do much easier work now. If anybody wants to do a like a ride along equivalent <laughs> for what Kevin does with Kevin, write write the show. Yeah, and, uh, we can arrange that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, it takes a, uh, takes a sled, uh, what do you, what do you, what do you call it? An, an all, on? all, an all, I think it's because you get a sledgehammer on one end and an ax on the other. So it's like, yeah, all. it makes sense, but it's, it's funny. It's funny. That there's different, you know, you go to different places and there's different names for different things. Like, sure. Like we, we yeah, I don't know. I don't know what other people call clients. Like I know client is a company. Client is a company that makes tools. It's also a Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fellow <laughs> Kevin. But like there, there, there's a there's a tool called Lyman's pliers that other companies make. We, we call them clients at work. I don't know if that's what people call. I don't know. There's a bunch of tools like that. Uh, <laughs> channel locks. Thank you. Like you've that. tuned in to Kevin goes to work. All right. So they so yeah. So she's done. That, that's uh Dexter Julian's wife. She's done. Yeah. And, but, and I like that's the other thing. This movie from this point on doesn't slow down no almost at all it's, Except, it's boom, boom 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 speaking of slow crispy when he goes out he's like i'm gonna go get the car and i'm gonna pull it up or whatever and you got you're all gonna get dad because dad's freaking out and you're gonna get into the car so he takes his sweet ass time going out he goes to the trunk he does a thing he does this and that's when like i was like oh yeah he's in on it mm-hmm. it it's like he has no um sense of urgency like almost ever in this whole movie and it kind of like tells it you know it, it shows yeah. his hand i, I think especially it, it, watching it again when we get to the ending I'll, I'll i'll get more into what i was kind of expecting or what was gonna okay so then they're all sitting around trying to decide what to do aaron the australian jason Bourne, goes up she goes upstairs and gets a bunch of like kitchen equipment winds up Killing one of the one of the intruders like goes to attack her. She beats his head in with a meat tenderizer. Oh, um, which one is he? I forget. Because after the I forgot to mention this. After the mom dies, none of these people are worried that there's someone in the house, which there is. Now we know it. None of them are concerned about that. Yeah, all, no one does bring that up. No one does. No one brings it up. No one does anything about it. And the dad eventually dies because of that. Yeah. So which one of these guys does she take out? It's not uh, Fox. No, it's, it's Fox Man who is under the bed. Yeah, it's actually played by Simon Barrett, the guy that wrote the movie. Okay. Um, like I'm saying, like, how did he get into the house for her to take him out? I think. Well, no, he's not the one that gets stabbed. 
Izzy, yeah. like there's a guy. So at one point she's standing up by a window and this guy like reaches in right. and, like and she stabs him in the face. Is and it the goes, same guy? I don't know if it's that and he gets away. Yeah, it is. It's, in, it's yeah. And then the next there. Scene, she takes him out like it's that's a great scene. Actually, she has the it's like a meat tenderizer. Is that what you said? She hits him. She she like hits him at the knee. He goes down. Then she does this awesome like full arm swing around with it like yeah. full and just like which is what you should do instead of just like tapping something you should just like she puts her whole arm into it and just like cracks him on the head and then just like takes him out yeah and confused julian and z are standing there just watching the whole thing and i love she goes she's she gets really sarcastic and she's like thanks for the help or something like that and yeah they're like oh well it looks like you got it and it's like fuck you guys man yeah what, what a couple of douches I mean, everybody in this movie is a douche. Yeah. Um, except for her. We, she's cool. Except for her. Yeah, she's cool. But yeah. Um, and then the power goes out. The power goes out. Th- this part bugged me a little. I mean, and not to, to gripe about like fucking horror movies, but like power goes out and they're like, where's the breaker panel in the basement? And it's like, do you think it's a coincidence? So the power just went out. <laughs> or do you think they're maybe at the breaker panel killing the power? <laughs> like, you know, like, totally. what are you doing? Or maybe they're outside, like, but I doubt they're cutting power lines. Like they're probably in the basement shutting down the power. Right. Also, the 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 cell phone thing. Is it true you can buy a cell phone jammer for 30 bucks on the, on the I don't internet? know, man. But I'm glad you brought that up. I don't know. Um I always man, I always think like, why not just set there's nothing in this movie? I guess the 911 call, but besides that, there's not no reason not to just not have the cell phones and then you don't think about it. Well, but You've brought this up in previous podcasts because we do, I don't know what movie we were talking about, but like, you know, how a cell phone can just ruin the movie. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, no pun intended, but like hundreds of movies. I mean, Home Alone, Home Alone's fucked. You, you get, can't a, do you home get alone. a cell Yeah. You get a cell phone, movie's over. But this is 2011 and it's a movie that takes place in the current time. They have cell phones. And so you, yeah, you got to figure out a way to take these people I mean, aren't just going to roll. My, up my thing is always just why? Make it Why take what? place in 1991. Oh, well, there's no, there's I don't think nothing... you should have to set. I don't think you should have to s- retro retroactively set your movie in a different time. But there's nothing. The, the thing about it is that there's nothing. There's nothing in this movie that requires besides maybe the 911 text. Just don't put them in there and then be like, oh, yeah, I guess maybe it did take place in the 90s. I don't know. Like You don't have to say what year it is. Just don't put them it, in but, there. I get it. But you run into the problem of. Why don't these people have cell phones? And then also, like I said, I don't think you should have to set your movie. And it's, and it's specific to horror movies or sure, you know, thrillers or whatever in a time where there isn't a cell phone. It's more cre- it's more creative or more whatever. It's cre- more find a creative way to take them out. And in this case, they were like, oh, oh yeah, we have a cell, a phone, cell phone jammer. jammer. Maybe it does exist. I'm sure it does. But you brought that up, and I noticed in this movie all the tech in this movie, which I can't remember what I was doing in 2011. I bought my first cell phone, but they made, it's almost like they made a point to show that the tech was dated even for that age. Cause there's like a flip phone. Mm-hmm. Somebody, uh, Aussie army uses like a Sony shot cyber shot camera instead of using her phone, which I um, used to use. And well, there's the and iPhone there's the, wasn't, uh, wasn't really prevalent yet. I mean, it was out, it came out in 2010. And I knew like one person that had an iPhone and I didn't know them well, you know, like I, it wasn't like everybody had one yet, but each one of these, each one of these devices, it was the, it was the flip phone, the cyber shot. Oh, the CD player with the, um, Oh yeah. The five disc changer, the five disc changer, right? We all had these things, but they each serve a purpose, even though they're outdated. I I think they're even outdated for the time because in 2011 we were using MP3 players yeah, there were iPods. Um, so that's it's it's smart because the CD player that song keeps playing because it keeps playing that song, and yeah. it wouldn't do that on an MP3 player. It would yeah. only do that with a no. CD you're right. Player. The 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 Sony sh- Cyber Shot that she uses yeah. to take pictures of uh, yeah, it comes into play later. It comes into play later with the flash, and then the flip phone. I think probably has something to do with the jamming thing. So well, it's kind of she pretty, calls nine one one with it. That that's the whole thing is, and it's it's funny too. Like, in hindsight, watching it, like they really almost give the game away like four or five times. Like, 
when he like with like, oh, our cell phones don't work. The guy that's the killer is like, oh, they must be using a cell phone jammer. <laughs> like it's a thing that exists. And sure. everybody's like, why the fuck do you know that? You know, or like maybe we're the, just out of the loop. <laughs> I mean, I'm cell phone jamming technology. Well, but then there's um another part where she's trying to call 911 and she's like, no, you can text 911. And even if there's no signal, they might get it in a like when when there is a signal when it goes through later yeah like it's a thing and her boyfriend is like crispin is like don't bother trying what are you doing don't even bother this yeah. is it's pointless and it's like what are you talking about dude yeah. like i don't know but um i think it's i just that's i, I didn't give i i didn't when i was watching it this time around i didn't give wingard enough credit for his use of technology i think i actually do think it was intentional and smart what he did with it so then, yeah, they go upstairs and you get the reveal. You get Felix goes upstairs with uh, not Olivia Wilde, I forget her name, Z, and they're walking around. <laughs> they, they run into the dad. You get a jump scare. Killer comes out from around the corner, cuts dad's throat. It's this... really like, yeah, that Felix is, the, is, is in on it. He's trying to kill the whole family. And this seemingly. kill, this kill of the dad was really, really telegraphed in a bad way. He's talking to, confused julian and z mm -hmm. and he's like now we got to do this thing we got to do this thing and he's backing up and it's a wide shot mm -hmm. so you can see what's behind him nobody ever does that in a movie unless something's going to come up behind you and get you sure. and sure enough like boom i i just i was like ah i wish they had handled that his scene that scene a little different because it would have played for a better like shock for the dad getting killed and the reveal of yeah them being in on it i don't know, I know what you mean as and then if he gets, as if those two couldn't be more bigger shit bags. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's what I meant about Z is like, she, you could just take her out of the movie and nothing changes. And like, she's, I think, I mean, I don't know. I will get there, but you got it. She's got to be a giant pile of shit to be dating a guy. Who's going to, who says, Hey honey, I'm going to kill my whole family. You want to be in on this? <laughs> like she's got to be a giant pile of shit, even more so than him. I mean, she's, least, she proves herself to be though later on. In the oh, movie. totally. She's, you know, and seem, I mean, who knows? She might have been talked to him into that. Who knows? Maybe. And yeah. then I, then you have the scene where the, the, the next scene is the other killer comes in, you know, the other intruder, he gets in the house. Oh, wait, after he kills the dad, he finds, uh, he finds the body of the other guy who turns out to be his brother and he flips out. Right. I thought that was cool. Where he you flips, know. where he turns the table over. Yeah, the t turn the tables a little much, but it was it was cool that he was fucking pissed. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, I agree. The table know. thing though was like, man, this is supposed to be a stealth mission. Yeah, no, <laughs> and nobody hears it either. And it's a giant table that I'm not quite sure a human one dude could flip so easily. <laughs> I might be able to because I've got the strength and body of Michael Myers. So then, this was a this was a cool scene. I like this next scene. So like Aaron's hiding. And uh, this guy's trying to kill her. He's he's about to pull a shining. He's like uh, he's hey, axing the door. Who's, Aaron? who's, who's Aaron's Aaron? this Australian chick. Oh yeah. Okay. So this dude's axing the door like the shining, and then <laughs> Swanberg just comes like waddling in. Like he's walking he's, around he's the whole movie he, with an arrow in his. He's back. got an arrow in his back the whole movie. Yeah. He doesn't want to pull out, but like he just comes like stumbling in to this room with this guy <laughs> and the guy's like oh i'm gonna kill you now <laughs> like yeah. fuck this fuck fuck trying to knock this door down i'm just gonna right. kill you so he goes to do it and then aaron stabs him in the back with a screwdriver but he gets away i had a problem with this because it's like man you just stabbed him go for it get this kill this motherfucker like yeah yeah i know you kill mean. this motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> um did we already say that Z tried to have sex with the dude on top of the dead mom? Did we already Not say that? Yet. That Does that happen? Doesn't that happen right after the the dad? It's coming up. Okay, all right. It's coming up. She's about <laughs> shit. But yeah, um, so a uh, dude walk comes out. Yeah, and the whole thing with the then you know. then yeah, Aaron has the talk with Z that like, hey, by the way, uh, I used to live in like a survival oh, community, yeah. and you know, I'm from basically. Here's my exposition, and this is this. Oh, maybe you're right. Maybe did I skip over the. I yeah, say, I guess I did skip over. That. I think yeah, you're talking about Z with the mom. Yeah, the mom. Yeah, it happened. I'm pretty sure it happens when the. Dad I think dies. that's the only reason she's in the movie. I think they thought that you know what I mean. Like that was a real fucked up thing to do and say. And well, like I said, it verifies that she has to be a a, a bigger pile of shit than the brother who wants right. to kill his family. 
she's going to go along with it and be like, yeah, let's do that. She's just like sadistic and gross. So then you got the next scene is um, Felix and Drake are down in the basement. And uh, Drake is like, is Weinberg is like, uh, he's like, I got to go find Kelly, who was his wife. Right. Is it Amy or is Amy uh, the, I got to find, I got to find my wife. And he's like, your wife's dead. <laughs> and he's like, what? And he, he doesn't know. He wasn't in the room when she got, you know, because I guess he got the guy, the guy killed her in the other house and then brought her over and threw her through the window. He doesn't know she's dead. And th- it's a cool scene with, with Swanberg. It's a good. It's a good where, scene. I like this. Scene. Yeah. Where he's like flipping out. It shows that he's not that he does have a heart, you know? And yeah. Like and it and it shows in the beginning, it shows his marriage isn't in a good spot. Sure. Like she doesn't want him to touch him, but that doesn't mean. Yeah. And he's like, whatever. Where's the Viking? Like, that's the entire yeah. <laughs> like setup for his character is like, fine, whatever. I'm just going to take some painkillers. But she but he's still f- flipping out. His wife's dead. Like, he's sure. not. Then Felix just starts stabbing him. Because right. he's like, I got him here. I might as well just do it. God, Stabs a him a bunch of times. Bag, man. But I, what a great scene to be like looking at him, even yeah. though like after he kept stabbing, I'm like, why don't you move, man? <laughs> like, yeah, do something you, like do try something. and try and be S- stabbing back or stop. Or like, or... don't just stand there and get stabbed like a fucking pin cushion. Like you would you would be like, whoa, what are you doing? Stop stabbing me. <laughs> 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 so wait, I wait. I just, I just want to have this straight and I want to make sure everyone in the audience understands that if you were in this situation and you were getting stabbed, you would, you would be like, Hey, wait, what are you doing? Like you would make sure to, to clarify the situation. If you get stabbed <laughs> in the stomach and while it's a very powerful scene that he's looking at his brother, like, yeah, what absolutely. did you just do? Why did yeah. this? Yeah. And his brother just takes out another knife and stabs him again. You're saying he should have been more like, hey, what are you doing? Yeah, you'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. What the fuck? Are whoa, you hold doing? up, hold up. Did hold you just up. fucking stab me? What is that happening? And like, you, you wouldn't just, just stab me. I mean, he puts like 10 knives in him. Yeah. He just keeps like, he, apparently they're at a table full of knives. He just starts putting like <laughs> screwdrivers, like whatever he's got, like candy canes. They just, whatever's on this table, he's just jamming it into this brother. And then, it's, and, it, and it's, a, you know, it's a heavy scene because his brother's looking him in the face yep. the whole time. And, and then he backs away and you can see all the candy canes that are stuck in it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a cool scene, but it was yeah. also like, what the, the fuck? The you, only that's not ask- how you would get stabbed. No, <laughs> no I, I totally agree. I see where you're coming from. I do like it though, be- in, in, in part, in part, because it shows like whether it's shock or not, um, Dexter is like, it almost makes him look tough. Like he's taking all these stabs, dude. And he's just standing there taking it like candy cane after candy cane. And it's yeah. just like, he's just standing there. Like, and at first you're thinking like, is he going to somehow survive this and just like beat the hell out of this guy, you know, come back from it. I don't know. But then he, yeah, just, it, you know, I mean, he, I guess they set it up earlier with the Viking and maybe, I don't know. Oh, that he's like, maybe. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Sure, yeah, sure, maybe sure. doesn't feel. But then again, I don't know. That's got to be some. He does mention him. with the arrow. He's like, I can't feel it anymore. Like it's numb or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Know. Who knows? Which you um, know, there's that scene where he he still got the arrow in him. Yeah. And he and I've never understood this in movies, man. He goes for some reason. He goes outside, and and the arrow clips the uh, clothesline that killed the sister, and he goes, mm-hmm. oh, you know, because it catches. Mm-hmm. And then he just reaches back there and he just breaks. He doesn't pull the arrow out. He breaks it off at the tip. Mm-hmm. And that happens in so many movies. Why would you want, why would you break it off so that it's still in you? Why wouldn't you pull it out? I mean, people don't know anything. Like how people you, are dumb, but it's like getting shot with an arrow. One Oh one, you pull it out instead of breaking it off. I don't know. It makes no sense. Yeah. Then you got a chunk of arrow still in you. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm with you. All right. Aaron goes upstairs. She finds the uh, dead dad, and uh, she jumped. Oh, and then uh, I think dude jumps out, and she jumps out the window. And I really liked that she jumps out the window, and she's all fucked. Up. Like usually, like that's a great scene. Actually, in a movie, people jump out windows all the time, yeah. and it's it's nothing. This one, like, it's a real. She lands all fucked up. Yeah. There's broken glass everywhere. It's in her hair. It's in her like. It's leg. all over. She's got a big shard of glass in her leg. She's having a hard time walking because she 
jumped out the window. Like, you know what I mean? Like she right. jumped out, out of a house, you know, like you'd be fucked up. And she goes to the, so- she, she goes to the forest dudes in the woods. He chases Crossbow her back. And, and yeah, yeah in the woods. he's, he's in the woods. He basically chases her back into the house. Um, she hides. Oh, and we didn't mention earlier when she was talking to Z, they were doing a literal home alone trap. Like right, it's the same the trap. Boards and the nails. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's a combination of two uh, home alone traps. Yep. It's, he it's does, a combination from the first movie and the second movie. Because in the first movie, he puts the ornaments. He puts the, the ornaments at the window. And in the second, in the second movie, he does the nails on the uh no that's the oh first no movie. it is the first movie they're both you're in right. the first movie yep you're right he puts the nails in the basement all right and With this the they, they put the nails yeah they put the nails they combine the two and they put right. the nails at, and i really like that he sees them and he's like okay but he doesn't see the one that's like he doesn't closest. see the one that's yeah that because he of the mask yeah it's, it's a good point blocking his his view so he puts a fucking a nail through his foot my sister did that when we were kids oh when they were building the house next door it was how did she react to it like that like dude probably i think she flipped out i wonder if you'd flip out or if it would be like fuck that hurts i don't remember she was like i mean she was like five or six she was a little can she walk today yeah she's fine now. (laughs) (laughs) i mean this didn't really affect this guy that much he just pulled it out of his foot well it did cripple him like he was limping the rest of the movie until he dies so i mean it would hurt I think that it had this not happened, I don't think he would have died. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. Oh no, this is where it's the fuck me in front uh in front of your dead mom. Is that's it? The, yeah, so they've been yeah. hanging out. So they've been hanging out. So yeah, the they're mom. upstairs the whole time, and that's when the whole like this is one of the things I'm talking about where like scene is. they're upstairs doing that, and all this shit is going on downstairs, and there's no and there's this there's, there's a massive disconnect. And yeah. I, I just it's like we're all in the same house. How are we not reacting to each other? being in the yeah, same house I, I i'm with that. you and and at this point i mean i think you're yeah at this point everybody's everybody's dead except for the, all the killers and aaron and like you know crispin's out doing who knows what at this point but like at so this point, absolutely the whole family's dead except for the girlfriend you know oh z you're talking about Oh, no, no, no. Uh, like at this yeah, point, we're down to we're down to the at two- this point it, it, when we find out what the original plan was, their plan succeeded. Killing off the family. Yeah, but they, they were saying, well, they were saying they wanted to keep. Oh, yeah. Chick alive. So I wonder if he was being honest about that, though. Like, I think he would have killed her off in a heart. I wonder. I don't know. That comes as part of. Well, before we get there. But like, yeah. So you've still got confused Julian Z. You've got two of the killers, right? Or yeah. just one. Is it two left? I don't know. Yeah, you got two left. Because you get the one in the basement with the uh, camera flash. Yeah. Which I I really wish that this scene had been what they intended. You know, like you remember the scene in Mandalorian where um, the jailbreak episode ep- in season one, mm-hmm. where there's the strobing red light and he's coming, Mando's coming forward, and every time it lights up he's closer and he so yeah. he moves in the dark it's like a strobe light effect strobe light effect they do it in the new batman trailer as well and it yeah. looks phenomenal in this it's such a missed opportunity man of this flash and this whole scene they go out of their way i realize it's blinding him which is yeah the point, but yeah. they could have made it they could have made it actually look and like look cool look cool i wish they but i feel like it. if if you made it look if you made it look cool it might not get across that he can't see it, I, it, it, I it's really it. fucking with him. This movie does not have a lot of style. Like they didn't go for a lot of stylistic choices. They went for more practical choices, I guess, which is cool. I think to do what I'm talking about is more of a stylistic choice. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I, that's fine. You don't have to do that, but it just seemed like such a missed opportunity in a horror movie. Aaron overhears Felix talking to the intruder. She figures out like, Oh, he hired these guys to kill everybody. And at that point, that's when like one of the guys like, He's threatening Felix because he's like, what the fuck? I just had to kill my own brother. I'm paying right. you guys to do this. So he's and the he, last one left. Yeah. And he's like, hey, asshole. <laughs> like, I did. Yeah. My brother's dead, too. And I like I like that line. We was like, I like my brother. So <laughs> fuck you. Right. You know, right. Totally. He basically tells him, like, oh, we'll pay you, you know, more. Uh, Aaron sees the 911. The 911 text has gone through and they're going to be responding. I totally forgot about that. 
Oh, and then she pulls like some karate move on uh on the sheep guy and uh runs out of the house and then and runs right back in. Yeah, and then when he tries to get back in the house, she stabs him in the face. That's number like, three. That's, that's mask guy number is that yeah, three? Because Foxman dies in the basement with the camera. There so he's go. the last one. He takes the yeah, he actually dies. Yeah, coming right in, he falls down outside. That's right. Oh, but yeah, so before she goes in the basement, she uh she rigs up the door <laughs> with another home alone trap. I got a big problem with this one. Yeah. Logistic. I mean, it's just I mean it's just like what the fuck are we doing? Like you, what's you, the you, what's the axe? What's the bottom of the axe? You need a fulcrum. What's the bottom of the axe hang, attached to? I have no idea. You know, it's got to be attached so that it can swing right, down. Right, so it can drop. It's not attached to anything. I don't know. It's just a weird, too convenient. It, it, it's also like, this is, <laughs> there's four people in the house that want to kill you. And like, this is taking a while. To yeah. Set up. Like, there's a reason in Home Alone and in Rambo 5 that like, there's a whole montage of him setting this shit up before they get there. You don't get, you don't get to set traps up like this while they're doing yeah, that. Can you imagine if that was what Home Alone was, where he's setting these traps up and absolutely. he's doing it? <laughs> Dude. get out of here with that shit but like <laughs> and then i really like that she spends all his time doing it and then he just the the guy comes in the other window through, yeah through the window and it, it's like oh fuck like he didn't go in the door and it's kind of wasted i did like that they had a, you know this movie's all Chekhov's gun like the whole movie it's like it's all what did you say Chekhov's gun they don't show they it, if they show a trap if they show an axe or they show something some if they do something, somebody's gonna die that way. You know what I mean? Okay. the The idea is the, the Chekhov's gun is a is a writing device or a writing principle or whatever that like if you show a gun in the first act, it needs to have gone off by the third. So this is not a Star Trek reference. No, and yeah, <laughs> it, it's not. It, it's crazily <laughs> enough, it's not. Which would have been a pro. You could have. I thought you were going that way because we. I don't think. Do we ever? Yeah, I guess Chekhov uses guns. Does he? Not really. I mean, so maybe, it, maybe it is something. He gets a Patrick. gets a bug in his ear in the second yeah. one. I always thought his name. I always thought they were saying Jack off. I was like, why is this guy's <laughs> name Jack off? <laughs> Supposed you to wanna, be a family you crack show. Up, you want to crack up? Uh, there's a video of uh, they're promoting Star Trek Five. Did yeah. I talk about this already on the podcast? Yeah, let's move on. No, <laughs> where 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 William Shatner forgets Walt, Walter Koenig who plays. Jack off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard. I this. did talk about this. I, I guess I he forget. He forgets what. Like he introduces the whole cast, and he goes, "You know, uh, here's uh Nichelle Nichols. Here's Leonard Nimoy." And then he goes, he gets to, he gets to Walter Koenig, and he's like, "The gentleman who plays uh Jack off. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've worked with this guy for thirty years. Thirty years you've been doing shit with this guy." Like, are you shitting me? <laughs> uh, uh, Walter Kane's a big well, Walter Kane. My name is Walter Kane. It's, it's brutal. It's that brutal. Hilarious. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, I love Shatter so much. <laughs> That's one of my favorite videos to watch. So. All right. So we got Z and Confused Julian in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Which oh, I, yeah. I actually really like this, uh, this fight. Yeah, extent. the fight is really cool. The fight is it's choreographed. It feels really real. Well. It's like, hey, this is, yeah, it's too because you know what? That, I feel like this is why Z's in the movie. It's two incompetent because, idiots against yeah, the most she competent could, one. Right. She could beat both these guys' asses. It's right. two pussies versus like someone who knows what they're doing in a, a close giant quarter. Dick. Two pussies yeah. versus a giant dick. Exactly. Is that what you were gonna say? Okay. Yeah, she, yeah, that's what I was <laughs> gonna say. It would, you know what I mean? It's like, and and it's and it's it's really close quarters. I love I love like when, you know, like little things like he stands up, she kicks the door into his face. Yeah, you know, like her use of her space is awesome. I like that she throw, and I remember thinking the same thing when she was like boiling the water earlier in the movie. She's boiling water. I'm thinking when she was doing it, like you gonna throw that in someone's face, and then when she doesn't, I was like, yeah, oh, that's gonna cool off. Like you can't. And yeah. she go. She that's the thing. How dumb are you? Like it's been <laughs> sitting there forever. She attempts to like throw it on him, right? And he's like, "It's not hot." You, <laughs> but like, then what? What, do, you, what does she do to him immediately after that? He falls. No. Oh, he, he slips in it. He slips, he slips in, it. in it. Yeah. Right. So it's then, like, oh, haha. Because <laughs> I don't. I don't think that plan? it's water. I don't think it's water. It's like green. No. 
So I think Maybe. I think it's some kind of soup that she was cooking for everyone. Maybe it looked like, um, uh, yeah, like lentil soup. Maybe lentil? I don't know. No, <laughs> sure. or it was maybe split pea. I don't know, but he slips in it. He slips in it, and you get okay. So I'm curious on where you're at with this blender kill. I was just gonna say, man, it's all great until she plugs the blender in. <laughs> it's fucking dumb. Okay, it, it takes me out of the. It ta- yeah, it takes me it, out of it big time. Here, here's what you know. What it reminds me of. Did you watch Breaking Bad? Okay, spoilers for Breaking Bad. <laughs> so the scene where they blow up Gus. Yep. When he walks out of the hospital, straightens his tie, and then they should like missing his eyeball or half. Yeah, and then he's like half gone. Yeah. If the show weren't like perfect up to that point, like it'd be like, get the fuck out of here with this shit. <laughs> like, what is this? A cartoon? Because yeah. it's it doesn't fit the rest of the show. Yeah. But the show's so good that it's like, all right, I'll yeah, fine. You know what I mean? Like you're saying you almost, you're saying you excuse it. I totally excuse it, but it 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 butts right up against the like the um what do you call it? the um uh, the self um the the belief like like what I'm what I'm willing to buy. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, like there's a, there's a level of reality. Valley? No, there's just no, a level visible. of reality set in in the universe, and that that part doesn't fit the rest of Breaking Bad. But the, the show is so good that I'm willing to let it pass. This in that is, example, in that example, Gus Frayne is such a committed and determined and driven character that I feel like that's his and, and it's a mix of that and it's a mix of what Romero what Romero did in Dawn of the Dead, where all the zombies go to the mall because that's what they mm-hmm. did in their previous life, you know? Sure. Um, it's a mix of the two where it's like it's almost like reflex because Gus Frayne is such a professional, determined kind of guy. Oh, like I he get gets, he, he that's yeah. his last gasp. You know, I'm cool. Listen, I'm so, cool with all that. I'm just saying that I like, I like it. It's more than I love it. I love it. I'm I don't just, just that, excuse it. I like it. I, like I mean, it. I, I like it. And I, I'm not saying I excuse it. I'm right. saying that it definitely took me out of it. OK, but it was cool enough. Like, I wouldn't take it out. Sure. Yeah, I'm not saying that it it. it it took me out. I, whatever. This is not that. It, it reminded me of that same thing, but that pulls it off, and this doesn't. You know what I mean? This it's, was this. So he. So she. She slams the blender upside down on the dude's head. He's which wouldn't there. would wouldn't it, it wouldn't stab your head at anyway. Like you know what I mean? Like would, just yeah. It, it, the whole it thing would, is just convenient. It would probably fuck your head up a little, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't jam into your head. Yeah. I mean, enough that if you turn the blender on, it's going to. Well, as you turn the blender on, it's going to dig its way in. I get that. But the fact that it kind of like he's stunned, it sits there for a second. It's like, okay, And then she, you know, they make it a point to like show her taking the cord and plugging it in. Like everybody goes time out. And then she like reaches and plugs it in. And then it goes. How did she know it was on? How did she know it was on the right setting? Blend and not mix. And it's like. (laughs) you know smoothie like, also other chick is just kind of sitting there while this goes down yeah well she's kind of didn't she get whacked in the face or something yeah maybe maybe but it's just it's it's campy and this it doesn't fit in the rest of the movie this isn't that kind of horror movie man no so, it were th- this this kind of kill works in frankenhooker you know it even it even day. works in it even works in uh absolutely but it even works in like i was trying to think of something where i saw it it's almost not even something you would see in friday the 13th or no, no, you know? yeah, you wouldn't see this. Maybe, maybe like the later Freddy movies. You know what I mean? There's like Nightmare on Elm Street. Like even that, even like, that. You know what I mean? Like it's not. It's very Three Stooges. So yeah, it's a little, and it's, it's, I think it's part of part of his performance and. Part it's a good kinda, kill, but it's like a, it's almost like a trauma thing. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, it's it, something it, you'd yeah. see in trauma. Which not as that's not a slight on trauma. Well, no, 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 it just would but, fit in that movie because. Yeah. It, to, like that the reality isn't the first priority sure and you know in that movie Absolutely. it's like oh this will be neat um, i don't know man toxic avenger is a pretty grounded movie <laughs> <laughs> i can't wait for that remake character study and yeah it isn't sounds... like joseph gordon levitt in it who's in it yeah like... but also peter dinklage is playing toxic avenger <laughs> really or at least the pre guy who turns into him i don't know i mean how the doing thing that. is they don't have the balls to make that movie anymore. You know what I mean? Like, the, I think they will. 
because doesn't Kaufman still own it? Like, yeah, he it's got to be going through him, and he's not going to do something that's not his style. So, I think it's I, gonna be, I think he's gonna. I think he's probably gonna. I, I mean, it's just seemingly he's probably renting out the rights. I think it'll be interesting. I think it'll definitely be interesting. Yeah. I just don't think it. I mean, it reminds me of when they like you know they I mean they made a cartoon of it. A Saturday morning cartoon, like it's like it, yeah, it reminds no, me of like they when they that with everything like RoboCop and Predator. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I I just hope it's not RoboCop three, where it's just like, oh, no. let's take all the, uh, <laughs> you know, no, let's take was, everything great about it and just make it, you know. I think it. I think all these guys, all these actors, are looking at it as their chance to like make a really fucked up movie and have it excused because it's because of the because of what it is. I'm, I don't, I don't see him doing it. Like, almost like planet terror you know like like the world's not in a place where they could do a movie like that well now. they'd have to clean yeah they'd have to clean it up they yeah they're clean, gonna really have to clean it up sure they can't do that stuff but i think as far as like or say the things that they said or whatever but i think it'll be it'll be toxic avenger you know it'll be i don't think it's gonna be a marvel superhero version of you know toxic avenger i think it'll still be pretty raw i don't know i hope so i mean but get, get the uh, whoever directed Greasy Strangler, like get them doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect fit. I mean, anyway. <laughs> that'd be almost too fucked up. I'd be like, man, you guys really, you guys really made the Toxic Avenger filthy. <laughs> <laughs> this dirty ass movie, get it out. Of like here. you, yeah, like that's it, honestly, like that would. Uh, I mean, yeah, oh, great. Tax Avenger is gross now. <laughs> 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 That would make it gross if you, you put, son, you know, you sons of bitches. What's his name? Uh, Crazy Ronnie. What's his name? Yeah, no, that was his friend. Oh, yeah. It's, no, you're right. Well, yeah. his name's Ronnie, but Ronnie. they call him something. I know. I can't remember. Yeah. Put him in the tag. Ta- oh, God. It was ugly up the Just, movie. I don't even want to. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. So then Z, she's the last. She oh stabbed. yeah. And I, I, yeah, I, right. I she I goes like to get it. up. Just stab right in the head. Stab right in the top of the head. Man, I wanted her to die way dirtier like yeah you know she was the worst and like ah, i just wish something i wish she had gotten the blender that's what would have been good I, I like yeah um so then like she's sitting there felix gets a phone call it's crispin and he's like hey i'm outside is everybody dead and he comes in did you not have a problem with the secret killer calling and just exposing himself not knowing who he's talking to he knew yeah. he knew that there were people in the house who were trying to reach the cops. OK, so for him to call and just be like, hey, is everybody dead? It's like, yeah. are you fucking kidding me? I'm with you. Yeah. No, man. You. But you also, call- these guys are stupid. Like, yeah. that's that's the other thing. They do a lot of really stupid shit. Um, I guess and I li- the, the whole thing's written to be clever. So it's and like- I, so here here's here's my thing on the ending, too. Yeah, I like that. They that he presents her with the moral question like here's the deal if i go to jail you get nothing or like right now where we're at where we're gonna get millions of dollars like that's a kind of a cool you know and i get like and then she just kills him <laughs> which is like yeah okay um i was yeah, thinking I mean, about that you didn't have to do that i mean he's unarmed seemingly I, like i mean i get like that's how you end the movie like you you know you don't just let him go to jail or if you know, i'm in if i'm her in this situation I'm going to want to kill that dude, my girlfriend or whoever. Like I'm mm-hmm. at this, I'm, I'm going to be like, you are a giant piece of shit. Yeah. The cops aren't here. You deserve to die. I'm going to take you out. And I can, but I also was torn with like, she could have played the game for a second and been like, all right, I'll get some money. And then I'm going to kill you. And then the kill. Street. Yeah. Kill you later, you know, and you do know. it in such a way that I could get away with it. I don't know, but that's like a huge what what is. So that's kind of okay. So and and the thing was watching this, I I didn't I remember that it was him, but I was watching. I'm like, you know what? Maybe a better ending would have been a Night of the Living Dead ending. He comes back and she just killed his brother and he kills her. And but then I was like, ah, would that be a better ending? I'm going back and forth. And they kind of have that. They they get but to have he their cake and eat it too. He gets the like, then. yeah. But, but that's what I mean. Is like do that instead of have him be the killer. You know what I mean? Like have him finally oh. come back, and he's but, just been a doofus for the whole movie. Yeah, like, or or he's back with the cops. I don't know how you do it, but like, yeah. 
you know, or like the cops come back and they shoot her because she, they they see her like killing Felix. They, I thought like, oh, maybe. But then they get to do that because then the cop comes in and shoots her. Right. Because he he just saw her kill fucking Crispin. Right. And then you get the Home Alone ending. Yeah. Which, again, I've said my piece on that axe. I think it's dumb. I think that whole setup is dumb. But um, what it does is it because like she's gone through this whole thing. You want her to win. You don't want her to. be. Yeah. And the whole time I'm thinking like she's going to get blamed for all this. But then the cop shoots her and then comes in, takes the axe to the face. That's the only cop there. So nobody knows who killed the cop as far as the cops go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So she's clean. I, I watched the, if you watch the credits. Um, yeah. It says suspect when they put it right. It's up. got, it shows all the people dead and things like that. And, and it says suspect. So it's like, yeah, okay. I see how she could be a suspect, but given the situation as it is, the cop takes it to the face. Everyone is dead. When the cops show up, you know, she can, spin it however she wants. And there's nobody who's going to say otherwise. I need her to get away with this. Like to, yeah. As a, as a fan and as a, uh, no, she a, earned her way out. She earned you know? it. Yeah. <laughs> she was the ultimate, one of the most yeah. ultimate final girls. You know, it'd be great if in 20 years they do a sequel to it and she's just been, you know, living and she just, her life is just shit because of this event that happened to her 20 years ago. And then she just gets murdered. Like, you know what I mean? Like in the first act, <laughs> like every sequel that comes out now. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, Hey, let's, you know, how would that, cool. well, we'll get, all right, we'll get into that. Um, <laughs> like just, uh, you know, I, I mean, it's a good movie. Like it's a good movie. Obviously it's a good movie. If I think I've never heard anybody talk ill about this movie, watching it again, it's definitely got some, some holes and things like that. But for the most part, I think it's nitpicks. Yeah, it's a solid, it's a solid flick. And, and I think I kind of tend to modern horror movies. I, unless I hear a lot of buzz, I kind of dismiss a lot of them because there's a lot of crap out right. there. So I think when one is good, it shines a lot brighter. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like there's another one I saw uh, this year and I forget the name of it. I'll look it up. I Dave Franco in it. Um, and it was great. Really? It, was, it was a lot like this, but not, not as like stylized. And Man, I really don't like that guy. Even then, you might like this movie. Um, <laughs> I mean, it is about uh, Stakeums. Yeah, <laughs> it's about Stakeum. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's not in it. <laughs> Sweet. So it's it's a Dave Franco horror movie that Dave Franco's not in. I want to yeah. see this. Yeah. Um, my, my well, if you think if you think of what it is, let me know. You know, it's it's not a great movie, which is what up until I this viewing of it, I thought it was. My brother really likes this movie, and he was the one that showed it to me. Oh, this is this is his kind of movie. Oh, for totally. Sure. Totally. And it's, and I like it, you know, it's a good, it's a solid movie and it's jarring. If I think the most jarring thing about it is her when you first, when she's, when it's first revealed who she is. And once you settle into that, she's absolutely my favorite part of the movie. Cause I love survival stuff. I love capable people. I love yeah. that. And, and she, she points she's out, a, she's a charismatic uh, protagonist too. She is. And she points out a lot of the things that we usually have problems with in movies. Hey, you're just going to stand. You just stood there this whole time. You yeah. Help me. There's also you a buy line it from this family because they're all a bunch of fucking rich dickheads. Sure. You know, she also has a line in that scene that I forgot to mention where she's standing there confused. Julian and Z go, you're worried about crispy. And she's like, yeah. And they go, don't worry. He's tough. And she goes, no, he's, no, not. he's not. But yeah. thanks. You know, yeah, and I and I just I love that she is this. It's revealed in the beginning of the movie, which is kind of weird, that uh, he is the heir to all this money yeah. in the car, in the opening scene in the car, and she's like, "Oh, I didn't know that." And it's like, "What have you guys ever yeah. talked? Like, why don't you know this about each other?" And then we find out later that she's got this big secret of being this survival person. Yeah, and it's like, it's like, what? Like, why are these people dating? They don't know each other, you know. But it kind of goes along with the whole everybody in this family everybody in this movie like they really don't give a shit about each other even the good ones you know which they're she's really the only one uh, they're all kind of self-centered like literally yeah, there's arrows involved. being flying in at one point and one of the sisters is like you guys don't believe in me you know what i yeah, mean like yeah that's what you're worried about right now yeah ex exactly it's a bunch of selfish assholes right except i mean except for her and she's great and it's cool because when they set it up and they reveal that he's a rich dude my first thought is like oh 
she she just like really got on board with this guy because she knows he's he's rich. So I'm like, oh, she's gonna be a gold digger, and then she's absolutely the opposite. You know, she's she kills him in the face of possibly getting all of this money. Right. She, she she chooses sort of the moral high, you know the moral high ground. <laughs> I like they pitch is like we can get married. I don't know if that's me. I'm like, listen, you don't have to marry. Like, yeah, you can keep this money and never <laughs> see me again. What do you think of that? Did you how, when he's his whole exposition dump there in that final scene? Yeah. How did you feel about that? Oh, that was OK. I, I mean, I guess it was needed, but it, it felt, yeah, it felt like it was just too much exposition. -y. Yeah, like, it was just like and he kept going. It, it, it could have been worse. Yeah. I mean, it was it really been like we was really been slow. This, yeah, he, you know, but he didn't. It. He didn't lay out the plan. It, 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 this movie did a good job of being like, you get it. You know, they, they didn't spell it out out. Some movies do. You know, it was yeah. they, they they trust their audience to to get it. You know, sure. And even when he's telling it, it just makes him that much more creepier. Which was, you know, kudos to them because he says like, I wrote down like he starts it off. He's like, he, he's got it. You know, he's like, babe, he's he's got his hands up. Like it's okay. I'm you know, it's just me. And he's like, the first thing he says is, you know how broke we are. And it's yeah. like, and it's like, holy shit, like this, you're going to kill your family. I'm broke. Yeah. I'm not going to go kill my family. <laughs> well, your family was not millionaires to be fair. Like, you know, you don't know <laughs> what, <But still, laughs> but still he, he's going to inherit this money anyway. At yeah, some eventually. Point. And yeah, it's yeah. like, dude, yeah. The other thing was this cop, the one cop who shows up, he just shoots her. He doesn't yeah. say freeze or anything. And she's already killed dude. So she's just standing there. Right. And he shoots her without any kind of like freeze. I'm a cop. Police are here. Who are yeah. you? What are you doing? It's just like, blam. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, he's, he's the, what's your boy in the Simpsons? Like, you know, he's Chief like, your, yeah, he's like your doofus cop, which I thought he was going to end up. He wasn't anybody. He wasn't like, no, a I thought director, so writer no, or somebody. No. Not that I didn't recognize him. I don't know. But it's, yeah, it's, it's a, a solid. Yeah, it's go a ahead, good go movie. Ahead. It's a good movie. Yeah. Right. It's solid. I mean, like it was better than, I, I couldn't find any wise. And it was like, you know what? This is a good movie that not enough people talk about. Hey, give it, you know, give right it on. some spotlight. Right on. Final questions. Yeah. 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 You, do you have a favorite line? Is there a favorite? There's there's some good lines. <laughs> Dexter. What does Dexter say? I really like the whole dinner. Thing. There's no way in particular line, but I did like the, you know, the underground film festival. They yeah. show the movies underground. Like yeah. I, I like that. <laughs> I think, yeah, his, uh, just his few lines about commercials. I was just like, I even wrote a couple down. That's why I watch. Or no, it was this, it was his wife. They're better was, than shows now. She goes like, "That's why I watch TV these days." And it's like, I get it. There was there was a time, maybe it was in 2011, where you did watch the Super Bowl for the commercials. You I never did, did watch, that. I never watched the Super Bowl for anything. I hate really? football. I hate commercials. Dude, <laughs> I hate the, the best, com but the best commercials were always at the Super Bowl. There were, and you know, and there were commercials that that were cool yeah now I agree. it's like but, yeah now but, it's like get this shit away from me like and plus everything's streaming so you don't really have yeah. to favorite character swanberg i think swanberg was my favorite uh yeah. drake yeah dexter for those who yeah don't know yeah he was good i like her i like yeah Elsie, main, yeah Elsie army which which is cool because i didn't when when you first meet her i'm like i don't know it's just something about her i didn't like she's also very she plays it very meek you know at the beginning yeah which is cool considering who she is. Uh, worst character. But you, you buy it too. That's the other thing. Like, totally. You know, there's a lot of these movies, you know, where like you've got a 110 pound girl like fighting like, you know, big jack dudes. And it's like, get the fuck out of here with this. Shit. You know what I mean? Like, but you buy it in this. You can do it. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it really like, and that's, that's just really, do the work. Don't just, you know what I yeah, mean? Absolutely. Like, but also uh, to the credit of Wingard or, maybe the writer or whatever the scene with the meat cleaver or the meat tenderizer how she hits him and where she hits him is intent intentional she takes the knee out he goes down because he can't stand and then she does that awesome swing to the head that's how you would use that weapon and it's it's super cool intentional super intentional too did it age well so far sure. it's so only far. been 10 years yeah and i think the only issue would be the tech that somebody would point out like you did with like his a phone jammer really a thing i don't know yeah but, but i'm sure it is now <laughs> yeah merch no i'm sure you probably buy those masks if you want to there's you like t yeah there's t-shirts and posters and stuff like people like i'm mondo 
a lot of the time I, I think Mondo might have oh no never mind those different websites uh but yeah I think they make they make like variations on the poster and shit like that uh if there was a sequel you were talking about it a little bit I don't know if there was a sequel like it would you'd have to be really creative yeah, I mean, to the, show her in a similar. Yeah, situation. I was making a joke about how like right. horror movies suck now, or not horror movies, just like these legacy sequels are garbage. I know? think if you did a sequel, you would have to do it the way that they do. Like, uh, oh man, what are those stupid movies with uh, where everybody gets a day to kill them to kill each other? What are those? The Purge. Movies? Yeah, you know they're not really. At least the first couple aren't connected. I don't think. Yeah, uh, no, they are. And well, the first one, they, they are kind of the the, well, the first, first one, one has Ethan Hawke. Yeah, the first one, the is second kind of, one is basically a standalone story. Yeah. Uh, the sec- but after that, they they start more of a continuity. Okay. With what's his face? Um, uh, Frank Grillo. Yeah, I really like him. He's yeah, me too. He's a tough motherfucker. Like you don't yeah, want to fuck was, with him. He's on a show called Kingdom. It was very. It was a good. It was a good show. Yeah. He he should have been Punisher. I love. Yeah, I, I've been saying that since day one. He should have yeah, been punished. I love Bernthal, he but he, I think he would have been better. Even he would have been way better. He's perfect. Yeah, I think if they did a sequel, it would have to be completely not related to this and just like an anthology sort of. So like your next two is just a different family. Although, yeah. although you've already ruined the surprise of the killers, the bad guys being. So the, in I the mean, family. it would just be another. I mean, it would be like doing. It, it scream but with sure yeah okay you know that's what i mean good, it is just in, instead of keeping nev campbell just do a brand new fucking set of teenagers right and but i'm saying know. like you already you're already looking for like in this you're like oh it, first time around you're like oh shit it's it's the siblings like they're killing their own family you couldn't pull that off again because you've already seen the first one so it right. would have to be something but it would really, have to, some other twist it would have to know. be set in like a um like a retirement home, two of the old people are the killers. That'd be fun. Or be, I mean, yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> like Bubba Hotep minus the mummy, mummy, something like that. <laughs> Siskel and Ebert. Nah, this was they were gone. Yeah, when they were both gone. I think that's actually it. Ebert might have still been around. Really? But yeah, I think he was. I think he died in 2013. You're next. 2011. Letter Y in the books. So I've got Z for next week. Our final. Letter of the alphabet, Kevin. Mm-hmm. This is big. It is big, man. It's also, what episode is this? This is episode 30. So that means that letter Z is going to be the big anniversary episode 31. And we all know episode 31 is like, forget about it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to pick something that was important enough, was worthy of the letter Z, our final episode in the alphabet, and also within the parameters of our traditional pickings and rules. So for letter Z, I chose 1987's critically acclaimed zombie high. I have never heard of this, but it sounds great. And I've never seen it. It's got a great cast. Your girl from what's her name? We met her. Didn't we meet her? Uh, Virginia Madsen. No, we we looked looked at her. We looked at her. She was in. Yeah. She was at the first horror con that we went to Virginia Madsen, Cheryl Finn. Yeah. Twin Peaks. Uh, it's got Paul Feig, the director of your favorite 2016 Ghostbusters, as an in a role as an actor. I hope I, I hope he gets murdered, dude. It's got Paul Williams. He did a lot of acting, by the way, early. Did on. He? He's in yeah, he's in Heavyweights too. Uh, no, I haven't seen it. Uh, it's about a uh, fat camp for like twelve year old. Awesome. So yeah, it's got some awesome, uh, really cool posters. It's got a super serious eighties vibe to it, and um, I'm looking it forward. Seems- to it. This seems perfect. This seems like a very good find. Right. I, th- for letter Z, it's like, all right, there's going to be a thousand zombie movies and there's a decent amount. And I think everybody would have picked one of those Fetalucci, Fugalucci, whatever his name is, uh, zombie or zombie two or zombie three. And those are great movies, but let's uh, let's do something that nobody else would do. Yeah, this is right in the wheelhouse. So yeah. I'll watch this for sure. Cool. cool. Zombie High, 1987, episode 31 for Z. Uh, what else do we have to cover? Uh, let, how about you guys? We're looking for one more iTunes review before we do our Demon Knight Blu-ray giveaway. And once we get that 10th review, uh, we're going to do a pull your name out of a hat deal and give away. Kevin has a brand new Demon Knight Blu-ray and a pair of his uh, clean boxers that we'll send, we'll send to you. Uh, we also, if you want to 
find us on social media, Twitter at DBP podcast. I always forget yeah. it. That's where you can find us trolling James, James Woods, our hub, Instagram at death by podcast. That's where we post everything that's going on. And if you want to support the show directly, you can join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash death by podcast, where we have our second bonus mini podcast, boob tube TV, where we talk about a vintage TV show every week. Just tonight we recorded tales from the crypt season two, episode four, which was, I liked. Yeah. It had a, co- had a cool zombie in it. Yeah. And uh, it was fun to talk about probably our longest boob tube TV that we've done. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Talked a lot about star Trek. <laughs> uh we've speaking of you on patreon you, we've also got our my famous my famous segment adam watches star trek and a bunch of other behind the scenes stuff on the podcast you can also get our our uh, custom stickers on there and everything so check us out on patreon patreon.com slash death by podcast if you want to help out the show and i think that is everything am i forgetting something mm-hmm. yeah. yeah a couple of weeks we've got our ghostbusters extravaganza that'll be fun yeah, that'll be fun. And uh, we're also going to do a top 10. We're going to go through all the movies we watched and pick out our top 10 favorites and uh, talk about those and a whole bunch of other stuff coming with the new round of the alphabet interviews, guests, the whole the whole deal. All right. Thank you for listening. This is Death by Podcast. I am your host, Adam. That is your other host, Kevin. It's Miller time. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I don't know why I wasn't prepared. You even looked like you were re- you I thought you were gonna like shut the fuck up. <laughs> Wow, that one was like that was really good. That might have been the best thing. <laughs> Always good. Thank you folks for tuning in. We will see you later.